Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining me tonight. Why is this game not showing up? <laughs> ah, fantastic. One second. <laughs> well, slight technical difficulty. <laughs> Something has gone awry. Indeed. Just be a moment. There we go. Should be good. No? Yeah? There we go. Excellent! Hey, new guy! Welcome, welcome, everybody! Stag, how are you enjoying the game? Ah, yes. We, uh... We were talking before we started about, uh... The long day and how relaxing... I, surprisingly relaxed and, uh... Not exhausted, I feel. It was a good day. Productive time. And, uh working a uh, job and working with my son 12 hour day bu busy big one but i'm totally chill and uh not exhausted and maybe in three hours i'll be you know face down in the cordy and cordy in my forehead but we'll see welcome stag how are you enjoying the game man ty hello hello when will medieval dynasty stream be the next medieval dynasty stream be uh i'm not sure it certainly won't be today or tomorrow uh we'll probably do more of it next week um Eric, Eric Shadowblade, hello, hello, welcome back, man, welcome back. So welcome everybody to uh, Old World, uh, finally out today on uh, on Steam, Steam and GOG, we've uh, had access to it since last year, um, when it went, uh, the, the developers have been very kind to me on this one. Um, I got the original and got the DLC with this one currently and got to look at them all early. Uh, so we'll be playing today um, as the Hittites, which is the new faction out or new, new-ish faction out. Uh, they're new, but they're also the oldest uh, race uh, represented in this game. So, um, well, not the oldest race represented, sorry. They're the oldest leader represented in the game. 
Da, 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 da. All right, so um, we are going to be doing the playthrough as the Hittites, and uh, um, I love the music score in this game. In this game, it's amazing. I do have to double check to make sure that we are on uh, that the audio is set, still set to music. Yeah, music and uh, recording and streaming copyright safety mode. So if you look at the playlist, only the ones that are highlighted with play are available right now. So, lots and lots of missing tracks. Um, yeah, anyway, so they're, they're the, the distinct list of differences because of the uh, copyright issues. I like that they've got that option because then you can, you know, enjoy great uh, con music on your own and easy to flip off the stuff that doesn't, that has problems. Culture. We are going with the, and that's not what I wanted, not loading. New game. We're going to be the Hatti or the Hittite people. This is Hattusili. Hattusili the first, creator of nations and conqueror of empires. I bring fear to the hearts of kings and queens and make pharaohs kneel before me. Whether they admit it or not. <laughs> in my mortal days I am king, and in my immortal um, immortality I am a god. Um Phenomenally interesting uh, history, the Hittite people. Definitely uh, King of Hattusa. Um, the, yeah, uh, it, it's, they're quite a, quite a group. They were very uh, warlike people, and that's represented here. Um, so let's have a look at what they have to offer, the, uh, the Hittites themselves. Uh, we'll look under stats here, and that'll give us most of the details. But right up here, uh, we start with all cities gain two civics per turn. That's pretty potent. Um, no matter what the city is. <coughs> can remove vegetation, ignore hills, movement, uh, cost. They can remove, all units can remove vegetation. So, um, we can actually chop down trees with our warriors. Pretty, pretty simple. Seems like a minor thing, but that can actually make them quite the, uh, versatile with, uh, and allow us to delay the forestry requirements. Uh, ignore hill movement costs, which is great, because they were very, uh, very hill-like people. Uh, they start with iron working. They start with, which is the unlocks the warrior unit. Um, what else? They start with husbandry, which allows you to make pastures. It also um, gives you the so that we'll explain the cards and the tech in the future. But we get uh, this one leads to uh, forced labor, husbandry, and steel. Um, husbandry itself, which we also get. Lead, gives us a food boost card and the spoked wheel, which is uh, actually part of their specialty. Administration, which unlocks a treasury project. Good one to have, for sure. Uh, not as good as if you're Babylon, but it's still pretty darn good. Gives you money, money. Uh, if you have professional army, it also gives you training, which is my favorite option to go there. They have a unique heavy chariot unit, uh, and then that upgrades to the three-man chariot. Um... <clears throat> Very fast, very strong unit, like three movement plus six attack and defense, pretty darn good. They have four very, <coughs> pardon me, very interesting shrines and very, very militaristic focused people, it seems. Uh, their shrine to Tuhu, Tarhun? Sure. The shrine to Tarhun gain, gains you an output of two training per turn, plus any unit on it will get 10 XP per turn when it's idle on that unit, or on that tile. Uh, it spreads their paganism, which adds plus culture per turn when spreading, um, and uh, and it improves opinions for those people for that uh, religion. Same as the rest of them, they gain uh, you know the plus two Hittite paganism opinion for every time you have a shrine built. The uh, shrine of Ari Ar Ariniti, sure. Uh, this one does uh, sorry. This one does training. This one does culture per turn plus spreads the religion. This one does the Kamrusepa. This is healing, so they actually heal your units by plus six HP per turn. Normally you get one per turn for sitting idle in your territory. So that's pretty fantastic when you have a total health of, of 20, basically 20 units. Um, chariots to tank of the, yeah, the tank of the ancient world. This especially, the, the heavy chariot uh, design these guys Pardon me. They didn't invent the chariot, but they were the first ones to really master it in warfare. Uh, well before the Egyptians. I think the Egyptians may have gotten, learned about it and learned to master it from the Hittites, actually. But uh, the... Um, 
what are they, the Mentati? Mentati, I think, were the people that they took it from, or they learned it from. The Kamrusepa, as I was saying, is uh, heals idle units, which is pretty fantastic. And then, <coughs> pardon me, and then the the Halki, Shrine to Halki, is a, uh, when you build a ranged unit, you get plus one level at the beginning of that, uh, well, when you start, and this thing provides an adjacency bonus for camps. So, pretty fantastic uh, uh, shrines for their paganism. Um, the families, they start with a rider family, the Kusaran. They also have the Ninasan family, which are landowners. They have the Zalupuan. I can't pronounce things. Zalupuan family, which are patrons. And then they have the Hatusan family, which are the traders. So <clears throat> we get to pick three of them. I'm thinking probably the one we'd leave out would be the the patrons, but we'll see because these guys give a family bonus of having um, civics. But as the the Hati people, we the Hatusa people, we actually get that for every city. So this would be like more of it, but you know. Uh, having merchants and caravans might be uh, even better. And the leader starts as a judge with a plus two charisma and plus two discipline with the hold court leader uh, leader mission. And uh, he's allowed to switch laws cheaper. It's probably not something we'd do, uh, considering he'll be the first you know member of the crew, uh, the first leader. Um, and uh, upgrade improve allows upgrade improvements. I'm really not sure how this works. Like when. We get an Odeon, we can build a theater, but don't don't they both operate? I don't know how that works. I don't know. Oldest chariot on record is from Anatolia, the Hittite region. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, the um, Mentati. I actually did some some history watching and reading, or reading, not lit reading. <laughs> I'm too busy for that. Uh, did some uh, watching or listening to some uh, video content and some documentaries on the Hittites to uh, familiarize myself with it because I couldn't from get in game to play. So we're going to be playing as these guys. I'm taking my time early on here. Uh, I would really like it if anybody has any questions. If you spam me with those questions, please do. Um, <clears throat> I really want uh, uh, to hit the like button as well because we really want to get a lot of people uh, that are interested in the game to see this and to uh, start asking questions because there's so much to this game. It's pretty wild. There are uh, map setting options early on here. We could choose just the simple setting, but we're going to go with advanced. Uh, we choose our nation. Um, preset leaders is fine. We're going to go with seven opponents, so they're all on the map. Um, standard mortality is fine. We're going to go with the scale to semesters. I prefer it that way. It just slows down the the, the timing, the, t the dates. Like, you go through family members less. Like, the guy has a chance to actually rule rather than rather than instantaneously, like, you know, 25 to 30 turns in and he's dead of old age. You know what I mean? Um, it it kind of makes it more of a... It, it, to me, this feels more like the difference between um, between the Civ 6's uh, game speeds, right? And I like the... I like this... Generally go with the slower game speeds there, too. Uh, a limit level is moderate. I think we'll leave uh, genders inherit equally. I don't know if that's very... Holy moly! Nate! Hello, been watching your latest Death World series. Thanks for the content. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate that. That did not pop up. I apologize. Hold on a second. My apologies. There we go. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, welcome to the chat, Nate. Um, we have, uh, I think... What is, what's the difference? So, I don't know. Hold on a second. Oldest child inherits. And... Wait, is that youngest child? Of... Yeah, no, no. I want oldest child inherits, and I want the genetic cognition. No, I want males inherit before females. I think that is accurate to the Hittite people. I know the Babylonians had uh, had the options for women to inha inherit uh, um, legal statuses. I'm not sure where the Hittites were in that, so I'm thinking it's probably ag agnatic, cognate, cognatic, blah blah blah. I think it's dudes before women. In fact, I'm certain it is. Historically. Uh, difficulty is set to noble. Sure. That's what we were playing on the other one. I think that's fine. Uh, tribal strength. Sure. AI uh, aggression. Sure. That's fine. This is basically the settings we played, we've been playing our other series on. 
Um, so we could have them start with two cities, two technologies, or three cities, three technologies. I think we'll do three and three. Uh, okay, the points victory, ambitions victory, and double point victory. So if we double their points, we win. Sounds good. Let's start up the game and see what kind of map we have to offer. We have on offer today. <clears throat> ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. I love the music, though. So good. <laughs> Researching your way to what? Lumber mills? What? What? All right. <laughs> You are Hattusili, warrior king of the Hittites. Uh, we will be trying to do a very militaristic play through here, but again, we're going to have to respond as the as the thing develops. Um, okay, so <clears throat> first called Labarnas, Labarnas. Yeah, you have earned your throne name, the Hattusili of Hattusili, through fighting to unite the heartland. Although the people now stand behind you, there is still a threat of in the threat of intrigue. Your family will need to be brought in line if if Hittites if Hittites if the Hittites are to become a grand nation to surpass the kingdom of uh, your forefathers. Uh, the existing civilizations of the old world do not yet know the strength of virtue of the Hittites. Yeah, of Hittite. <laughs> the uh, the uh, syntax is a little funky there. Um, yeah, Hittite, would, Hattusa probably is what should be there. Anyways, but they will learn. All right, so we get to found our first capital. This is, uh, I'm going to be doing a teeny tiny bit, probably a lot, of, um, of chatter that will be related to, oh my goodness, um, that'll be related to tutorialish sort of stuff, right? Just like the oldest to inherit, no matter the gender. Uh, yeah, I usually do when... Well, I, I, I would if I, was, if I was playing the others, but I think the... Uh, the I'm trying to have Matt remember what the historical groups... Like, cert, not every... You know, the modern Western dialogue right now is suggesting that, you know, things like women's rights are a new thing. Uh, there was different levels of that throughout different cultures throughout history. So to, to blanket it as always being one way or the other doesn't quite make sense. And I like that it's got the option to, to manipulate that if you want to. Uh, so let's have a look at our, our crew. We start out with King Hattusili, the founder. Uh, 46 years old, okay. Leader of the Hatti. It, okay, he is actually the the family starts as the Hatti. So let's see our people here. Um, the Hattusin are actually one of the family groups okay which make kind of makes sense that we would choose that one but i'm not 100 percent sure if we'll go that way we'll see it would actually make sense because we also have gems which is one of their bonuses uh if you middle click on anything it'll that has a pop-up it'll lock that pop-up uh so we can then mouse over the bullion resource um <clears throat> um this is a nice start it looks like it to me yeah uh, so then we can look over bullion resources. It just, you know, bullion, you typically you consider that gold and silver, but it's also pearls and gems. And we have gems right here, so that's not bad. Uh, there's also ore there, ore there, ore there. My goodness. Very nice. Horses up here. That's outside of range, probably. Yeah, we could settle over here. We get that iron. Uh, if we settle over here, we get that iron. And up this way gives us a little more forestry. I'm not really sure what is where. So I think we'll probably settle over this way. If you guys have feedback, please don't hesitate to uh, to give it and to ask questions. So, um, look, you're talking to a Scotsman who had Bordica in his history. <laughs> hey, hey, you look, you're you're, you're watching this a uh, 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 person of Scottish descent who loves the history of our people. Oh, we, really? Most queens in history, really? I was unaware of that, see? There you go, learning. Um, I think we'll go this way. This one is, uh, you know, three, four more forest tiles and an iron. This one also gets us an iron, and it gets us four, five more forest tiles. It's also a little closer to the hills over the mountains over here, which, uh, and these hills through here will be more iron rich, I'm sure. So let's go over this way with our dude, and we're probably going to go with the Hattusin, uh, both thematically and, uh, 
um, tactically, it would be a good choice here. So we, our options, again, are the uh, Kusarin. Uh, we actually are not... It says leader of the leader of Hati, which is the empire. We're not the we're listed as Hati, not the Hittites. Interesting. <clears throat> um, Augment of the founder. Now that's interesting. Our prince uh, Mursili is I read about him um, or learned about him. Mursili is his grandson, and his grandson it was uh, inherited because his uh, son and someone else. I forget who it was that his son was trying to to assassinate and overthrow him. Basically, there was a lot of that assassinating stuff going on in their people. Uh, suspicious of the queen and uh, Labernas, and Labernas is our son, I believe. Labernas the younger, your son, yeah. And is he um, in the? No, he's not. Royal. All descendants of the your dynasty founder, uh, dynasty's founder are royals, which makes them eligible for oh my goodness for succession, uh, and to be tutored. Each royal will uh, cost some money per turn. Nice. Uh, so this gal, our daughter, and our son are both really really angry with us. Uh, this son is less angry with us. Well, that's nice. The queen consort is also not happy with us. So the family's really ticked off right now. Um, <laughs> good start. Uh, our grandson here, though, is the is our heir, and he's six. So that's fantastic, actually, for the uh, for the future. Uh, we have a schemer of a wife, which you know, all of that kind of pans out pans out with the craziness that we dealt with. Um, she's a schemer, so she actually has four wisdom minus one courage. Uh, those pan the uh, show up in here. So the minus one courage is actually causing us to lose one, uh, or sorry, lose three training per turn, and that's the only source of training we have because we don't actually have a courage point for ourselves as of yet. Um, and then uh, we also get uh, training from uh, noble level, or sorry, science from noble level. We also don't have any wisdom points. Uh, the Queen Consort has four, though, and we get 1.2 bonus from her. Our heir does not give us anything yet because he doesn't have stats and he's not old enough. Uh, we're making nine orders per turn. Is that their total production? Yeah, only nine per turn. Ooh, baby. That's rough. <laughs> uh, I'd personally settle to get the coast, uh, Coastal Iron. Really? Why is that? Why would you settle for the Coastal Iron there? An interesting twist. I thought the go-to would be the uh would be the mountain one uh what else can we what else can we know about our people well let's uh, skim through our, our tech tree um we have like we said iron working and animal husbandry to begin with and administration to begin with these ones are blue if we look at that that actually is the um there we go if we have mouse over that we can see it available is stone cutting divination and trapping so we can get those tech started the moment we settle our first city which we'll do right now uh, right away here. Uh, the discard pile holds the other four, and thus there is no draw pile, which means those discards will be available after uh, the next tech is finished. <laughs> I've only one complaint so far. Borders are very hard to see when trying to expand borders with cities. Ah, yes, they are. I agree. I would like to see that an option for those to be highlighted even stronger. They're pretty good compared to some other games, um, that I'm not mentioning when I'm playing this one, uh, but, um, you definitely get there. I wonder if there's any, uh, no, that's zone of control. I wonder if there's any, uh, any one of the overlays that would help with that. Probably not. Um, hmm. so if you, if you want, you can click these. You can also, uh, hold a hotkey to do that, but you can also hit, um, shift in that hotkey or shift and click to leave that on. So this would tell us, oh, we've got or over here, here, and here. We got cattles, we got gems, we've got uh, horses, and we've got food. Now, the har the number underneath is showing what you get for harvesting that resource. You can only do so if it's outside of your, uh, cult of your, any city. It has to be outside of your territory zone. <clears throat> the inland island is more likely to have another settlement in range. Hmm, interesting point. A little longer thought, pro longer term thought there. I think that's not a bad idea. We'll go with that, Eric. I'm, I'm in favor. 
Uh, you know what I can do? I can hit undo, and I'm going to hit undo again. Because that's an undo option I wanted to point out. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but um, we will use it just to A, show it off, and B, save a turn. Uh, not that we're going to need them this turn. Uh, we're going to move our dude over here. The undo just undoes stop anything that you do. So literally anything can be undone in this game, which can be used pretty cheesy. Um, but I don't think it's uh, that big of a deal at this point to, to do that. <laughs> yeah, the borders in forests are definitely harder to see. Now, I wonder if there's a way to have the visual overlay disappear. The trees and stuff. Probably not. Roads and river overlay. That's your trade. So, if we settle here and there's another city option up here, this city, since it has a river access to the water, would also have a river access up to this one, so you wouldn't need roads to connect the two of them. Hello, gang! Bruce! Hello, hello! Play older because I'm old! Makes sense, right? Totally. You're not quite as old as, uh, Hattusili, but, uh, well, maybe you're as old as he was at this point in the game. Um, alright, let's, let's go over here, as per, uh, per Eric's wonderful feedback. Uh, but Inland Iron's a better quarry spot. It is. It is a better quarry spot. It's also a better short-term ironing iron spot. I would quarry these tiles in here, for sure, um, and mine over this way. But again, we can build stuff out here, and for instance, once we get the gems, we will want to immediately put a specialist on there, which would give us access to this. We can expand more territory further as well later. So I'm going to go with his suggestion here, and we're going to found the capital of the Hattusan people in Hattusa. I think we'll name this Hattusa. I don't know if it's going to be named that. So let's settle it this way. We get the caravan people, so they get the bonus from Bullion. Uh, they also get uh, quicker uh, upgrades for ha for hamlets. So hamlets become towns and villages and whatever else faster. Uh, and their people, their builders can quickly make roads. They can make multiple tiles of roads rather than just doing one road and stopping for that turn. Dude Halia joins the court. Dude. He is kind of a dude. Look at that. Uh, look at that. Look at that. That dude face, huh? Uh, a new court merchant, Dudalia, Dudalia, has joined the court. His kin, his keen attention to the economic affairs, will help Hati, the Hati, prosper. Requires uh, blah blah blah. So he's got three. Um, he's got three charisma and four discipline. He's actually adding two point six civics per turn and he's adding 37.3 coin per turn he can add a uh as governor plus 40 family opinion nice very nice um and governor also gives growth per semester uh per turn per culture level so yes that's excellent welcome welcome all right we get our first tech option uh, we could do forts for quarry we could do slingers for camps and uh, or sorry we could do trapping for slingers and camps Quarrying and forts uh, with stone cutting, and we could also do divination for the shrines. Now, uh, how this is going to work is uh, for those who are new. Re I really like your playthrough. Uh, your playthroughs picked up the expansion today, which has Hati the the Hittites. Uh, yes, we are playing as that, Bruce. That's who we are right here. Look, Hattusili, the founder. We're in like literally the first year. Oh, I did this. Did no. No, 200 turn limit. Are you kidding me? What did I do? Oh no. Oh no. Okay, hold on. Let's save the game. Game saved. Uh, am I able to adjust that setting? New map, start a game with current No, I don't want game editor. Oh no, what's that going to do? I want to change the rules. Nope. Ah, how do I shut that off? How do I shut off the game editor? Oh my gosh. I don't I've never used this before. I don't know how to shut the game editor off. Is there a command for that? <laughs> no, it's close, there it is. Not what I wanted. I want to look to Options, maybe? Their email. Really? What's email? Is that the... Players wishing to play current versions of the language. Right-click. Okay, not sure. 
I don't know if I screwed up the setting here. I want to switch the turns off, but I did I did something wrong. I did I don't know why there was turn limit on the game. I find that really dumb. Really, 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 really dumb. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can get the map seed somewhere, can't we? Is there map seeds for this game? Oh no! Um, is there... Restart... Oh, oh, oh! Cancel. Not what I meant to do. New map. Start from the beginning. Oh no! Is there a way to get the game? Game editor has the key? Hello a third time! Hello, hello! Getting the Circle of Doom? Why are you getting the Circle of Doom? I'm not getting a Circle of Doom. Nope. The only thing that uh, Steam Streamlabs is telling me about is uh, um, a self-care program, which is a little weird. Is there a way to... Is there a way to find my game seed? A map seed, so I can start the same thing again with the right settings, or change the settings. Time to victory, I think, is the turns. Yeah. Quit my first game when you find that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there it is, map seed. Aha! Look at the bottom. Nine four zero six six four two five. Okay, if you want to uh, um, start with the same world and see what you can do, you just can't spoiler it. Not during the stream. Um, nine, four, zero, six, okay. Let's go back to the restart game from the beginning. Does that just start the same map immediately, or does that let me go to the settings? Probably it just instantly starts up again, which would have the same rules. They haven't updated the UI tip in the menu yet. Uh, a lot of them say the same thing about languages. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Okay, so this is the same map. Okay, so if you want to start the game over again, you literally hit restart game. If you want a new map, you hit... Oh, that's cool. I like that. All right, we got to go back to the menu. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> that looks like the game... Uh, it's concerned about you putting that number in. I think it's because it thinks it's some sort of phone number or something. <laughs> Posting the streamer's phone number. All right, let's go to single player new game. Lovely. Uh, we're the same dude. There we go. Advanced settings. How did we have a timer on it? I'm victory. Oh, because I stopped the scrolling right here. I look down and I'm like, okay, and there's the victory points, of course. Time victory off. Uh, Pre-made map. Map seed. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. Nine, four, zero, six, six, four, two, that's four, four, two, five. Ah, there we go. Map file, okay. Characters and families are removed from the game. Wow, that would be dumb. Uh, lock save, no undo, lock player options, randomized families, no starting tech, no force marching, this is, this is a whole bunch of dumbness. One city challenge, ruthless layout, AI, that's not bad. <laughs> Collecting mods, no, there we go, uh, why can I not start game? Three map maps selected, but no map file has been specified, what? Oh, random? Ah, there we go, random. But... Which seed was it? I think this is the right one? No. Um, the game is more money than what Epic had back a few weeks ago. Ten percent off and DLC makes an okay price. It's available today. Uh, I don't know if this is going to give us the same map. I really hope it does, because that was an epic map. 
That was a really epic map. Hey, Bruce! Thanks, man. Appreciate that. You don't have enough uh, resources to start a unit or improvement. Alt-click to automatically buy the resources. Yes, indeed. Hey, man. Thank you so much. Super chats. Appreciate that, Bruce. Thanks for joining us, man. Glad you're here to hang out. Uh, good to be on and off watching. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it was inland. Yeah, this is a different map. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, we're gonna re you're gonna go back. Oh no. Uh, actually, you know what I can do? I can load this game up where we did this one. Uh. Oh, man, that was a good map. <laughs> All right, if we can't figure it out within the next, like, two, three minutes, then we'll switch to, uh, at least this, uh, this hopefully will help some of you, uh, not get stuck at the same problems. Okay, right to the same spot there. Here, and let's look at the, oh, my mouse over there, it shows me the information. Aha, there it is. Okay. So, all of that, really? Really? Good thing I've got a camera on my phone right there. Hold on. Oh, and whoa! Oh, you can drop my phone and break things. Hold on. Got a got a screenshot that. I think that worked. Aha! There we go. Modern technology. I'm screenshotting things with my cell phone to start games. Uh, let's go to uh, main menu again. Apologies for the delays, but. Uh, um, I think if we reset everything there, it will start the same. I hope. I really hope. If not, if we set all those things and it doesn't quite work that way, then that's what we get. Okay, so advanced settings. We have the Hati Nation. We are the judge. We have seven opponents. AI aggressiveness. Um, all of this is the same semesters. Uh, tribe levels normal. Where are these? Difficulty, the noble. Tribe strength. Tribe level is normal. Um, AI aggressiveness is set to aggressive. AI development is set to established. AI advantage is set to none. Uh, normal. Setting, setting, settings. Mortality is standard. Um, semesters, that's another feature. Uh, event level is normal. Where's event level? Event level is moderate. Yep. Uh, so the map type was Inland Sea. And the map size was huge. Interesting. And resource density. Um, pretty sure it was just set normal. I don't know. Nation's unique? Really? Oh, you know what? I think that is, like, to make sure that... that like, all different different starting nations? Probably. Probably. Now, seven opponents. I hope that means we get individual ones, but it, it does say unique on the setup. Points is enabled, double is enabled, yeah, and time was enabled, that was the only other one we oopsed on. And then the seed needs to be put in here, it's 94066452, and resource density is medium. Okay, this is it, if it's different map, then we have a different map. I guess we didn't, weren't, I, maybe I was more emotionally attached to that map than I should have been at that point in the, in the development of our uh, experience here, so... <laughs> uh yeah might not spawn you can choose uh this save oh hi we can choose what i can choose this save for the map preset or can you choose the save for the map preset ah look at that there we go same spot hello happy day let's go over here and let's start our city again aha and we get the same dude what a happy day look we're right back there that takes five seconds it took me only like three hours um, actually, what I don't know is if our family has the same stats. 
They do indeed, and so does this dude. Okay, everything literally is the same now. Yay, we did it. All right, so uh, we start with tech options. So let's look at what we have. So research is done with sort of a card-based randomness to it, I guess. It's not really a card draw game, but it kind of is. So this is your normal tech tree. The thing is, you don't get to choose the tech to go next. If I wanted to head towards... What what do I want to head towards? I don't know. Um, where's our where's our chariots? Uh, do, 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 do. Are these chariots light chariot? Yeah, but that's not really our special chariots, is it? Where's our special chariots? Actually, I don't know that that yeah. Uh, spoke to me. Oh, well, let's let's do this. This will give us an example. If I chose spoke to we no, that would give us a bad example. If I chose um. I don't know, battle line, sure. Then what I do is I'm suggesting a path of approach. So this is telling me, this little symbol up here is telling me you have a goal in mind for your... I love that there's a fish sitting in the travel. I've never noticed that. Um, if you have a goal in mind for your tech that you selected on your tech tree, this little green thing says if you, go, if you choose this one, it'll head you in that direction. So these are our three options. I want divination, but I'm going to quickly try to explain a little bit as we go. Great success, indeed. Uh, I know this is frustrating, but inquiring minds want to know. Well, I, uh, um, if you're talking about the, uh, the the process of getting this reset, then yes. Uh, Quarry is the best out of those. The only, uh, the only camp is outside uh, the borders, and we don't need shrines yet. I want shrines. <laughs> Eric, I want shrines because the shrines are... Hyper potent on these people, I feel like. I really, really like them. And it feels thematically good. Uh, I'm going to go with Divination. Um, I don't disagree with your technically probably correct choice of stone cutting. Uh, so if we mouse over here, there's going to be three, usually three options. Will be the draw pile, the discard pile, and your available. Available is whatever ones you can choose from this chance. If you have the Scholar Leader which is what Babylonia starts with, you can re-roll this. So if you get a leader that's a scholar, he has much more flexibility with his research research options. Hello world, says Philip. Hello, Philip. Welcome, welcome. Um, next options will be, we only get three choices, so the discard pile will flip to become the draw pile, because there's no more discard, or no more draw pile after this is chosen. These three, whatever's not chosen of these, go into the discard pile, and then the discard pile is redrawn. So the ones we've got right now, stone cutting, for instance, won't come up next time. So that's part of the reason why it might be a vital start. But I am going to go divination at this point, and uh, we're, we're going to go crazy with that one. I've got three units available immediately. We got the warrior. We started with ironworking, so that's nice. We started with the warrior. I think every race starts with some type of either slinger or warrior. Um, don't quote me on that, though. I'm not 100% sure. So we got three types of characters here. We got our um, we got our scout who can well scout and look around to see what what other things are. Oh, there's a city over there which we already know about apparently. Uh, he can scout like things like this up here to give us a uh, uh, a wonderful whatever this might be. Uh, our military unit, for instance, could head over this way to try to claim that territory before somebody else does. Our builder can do a variety of things. Uh, they can, they're can they they're infinite. They're not like a, the current Civ ones where they get used up. What they do is use up your orders, which is your logistical ability, your, your political ability and logistical ability. So the ability for you to do things like move units, build structures, uh, have projects, or do different social projects. So uh, if we were wanting to spend uh, time trying to improve relations with the Queen, that would take a couple orders and some either some civics or some money or different things. And uh, th that's basically our ability to do actions for the turn. So not everybody will get to do everything every turn. Uh, also, you've got the... Uh, I'm trying to spin through a ton of this, so sorry if this sounds repetitive for some of you. Um, oh, good luck getting stone to build your shrines. You're not wrong, Eric. <laughs> <coughs> we'll be buying stone at... An exorbitant rate. Okay, you know what? You convinced me. We'll switch it. Since we haven't actually finished it, we're going to switch it stone cutting. Mm, now I won't have anywhere to pray. Um, or four different options to pray. Um, we're going to choose uh, our scout here. And I'm going to show off a, one more feature that's vitally important to this game. You've noticed little dots over their head. Each character that has those dots is 
the that's their fatigue level. With three dots, they can move three, well, ranges. I guess the, the movement is two, so he can do two moves, and then that's what he can accomplishes in one order. Does that make sense? So this guy could move here because it's less movements to go through here, uh, which is great. Uh, once he gets here, he's used up one order. If he goes here, he's used up another. The number of orders showing there is how many we'll have left when he's done. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get our scout to move up here. That's one order. Up here is another one. You can do it all at once, but I might have seen something up there that was vitally important. That So moving here gave me the chance to look again. All right, buried treasure. Your scouts come across the ancient, long-abandoned structure that appears to have once been a village surrounded by uh, surrounding a mine. Uh, blah, 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 investigation. I'm not going to read through everything, because you guys don't want that sort of insanity. Uh, we could gain porcelain if we had $250. Sadly, our treasure cannot be, uh, bear the expense. We get some experience. Nice thing about these things is you don't have to do them immediately. This is an event that's now sitting here waiting for me to finish. I need 250 bucks to unlock that first option. Is there a way for us to do that? I'm going to say we can sell 100 of our wood, which is all of our wood, which is fine by me. So let's do that. I'm going to shift. No, I'm going to control click to sell it all. Uh, apparently, we only get like 190.1 for it, which is strange, but okay. Now it's 190 bucks. Uh, okay. How much? This is like hugely valuable. Like hugely valuable. I'm going to sell stone at an exorbitantly low rate of value to get that. To 250 and then I'll sell like 10 food there we go now that opens up that option so let's look at this again uh, what this does is this puts a resource a luxury resource in our city <laughs> sell 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 yeah it's like hugely valuable we haven't talked about resources or luxuries yet but it's probable we could go the rest of the entire game and never get porcelain so that's a big deal now, I don't think it's a tile-based one, is that? No, it's not, right? This is just the just just there. It's just a tradable resource. So we're gonna have that resource forever now. Which is huge. So we could we have only one family settled. So we could give the porcelain to that family, for instance, if we wanted to boost their relation. We could trade that porcelain out to another empire to improve relations with them and have a have a financial benefit from it. Um, we could give it to a religious well, I guess we couldn't give it to a religious leader. We give it to a city to improve its status. Like, uh, don't Drake Wood is a rare early game. Oh, I know. I know it is. But the nice thing about the Hattusan people is that this guy right here has the option to cut trees. Just like a worker does, all of our warriors can cut trees. They may not read books, but they can cut trees. Uh, I want to get growth going in the city. We could go down here and start... The gem mining, which would increase our cash flow quite substantially and add gems to the family, which is something that one of our families hopefully wants. Apparently these guys don't. They want olives and they want pearls. That is dye. And we have pearls. Ah, there's pearls down south. Nice. Uh, I think we'll go over here, get this worker to spend his one move. Right click him there. That's one order. We now have two orders left. And I'm going to tell him he's going to build a farm if we had the trees for it. Well, we don't. But this fine fellow, uh, we have only two orders left, so he can use one of his orders to cut down 20 trees. Now, this becomes a uh, cut trees tile. So if I am middle mouse click, this is lush ground. The tile that he's standing on is lush ground. It's flatlands, and it has trees, but they are cut. Now, if they cut trees again, clearing vegetation does not grow back. So if you're going to build... Um, a barracks or something there for instance you can pre-cut the trees if you build the barracks you still have to cut the trees so it takes orders to cut the trees but you can get the trees uh early basically i know i'm going to use this tile later and i want some trees right now so i could cut them and get some more if you just cut it once and leave it it'll grow back i don't know when actually but i think it's got some sort of randomness to it but anyways now we've got those those trees we can select this fine fellow and get him to build a i just will build a farm there that would be really dumb because this is cattle which of course needs a pasture 
uh, I believe. Yes, a pasture. And pasture will give it two growth and ten food. So let's do that. It's slightly more food if I make it a farm, which is interesting. But it doesn't give the growth bonus. And that is the important one. Uh, did that start? No. Let's do that, please. There we go. That used up our last order. Alright, so any questions so far? Uh, visible... Don't think there are any luxuries visible so far. What do you mean? If I look at... I can look at the yields. Uh, not that. The shift click down. This is a luxury right here. It's gems. Iron is not a luxury. Horses are not a luxury. Cows are... Uh, camp is not a luxury. Dyes, however, is. You can see the little icon there. Uh, it shows dyes, but if you look here, a mouse over it, it actually says luxury dyes. If I go over here, it says mine and so it shows the iron. That's not, uh, this one adds, adds things, but it's not a luxury. So right here, we have dyes. Right here, we have gems. And right down here, we have pearls out of range, but hopefully there's another city down there. Okay, so didn't get to do all I wanted to do. This guy, I wanted him over here, but he ended up cutting trees, which would have been fine. He could do that and he could have moved somewhere else and cut trees. But we just ran out of orders, just the way it works. All right, let's move on to our second turn, finally. If you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. Much appreciated for the fee I much appreciate the feedback and the, uh, the tips and hints and suggestions and, hey, do this, try that. Great stuff, guys. Great stuff. Uh, let's uh, creep our way up along the coast here. Oh, hello. Barbarians. All right, so let's talk barbarians. Barbarians are one of the three types of enemy city-ish things you're going to find. I don't know if $250 for one luxury is worth it, but I'm uncertain for sure. Um, I would say $250 is 100% worth it. That is, that's a perpetual luxury. That's not $250 all the time. It's just always there. That luxury will allow us to, to forever help something. Luxuries are hugely valuable, especially if you have luxuries that line up with the needs of your people of your families. Uh, anyways, back to Barbarians. So Barbarians is kind of the lowest tier of the social tree. Um, we have, they're not even a faction. So there's, we're, we're they, that's us. That's our nation. There are other nations. So the, in this case, there's the seven other nations now because there's now eight, not seven factions. Um, like the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the, who else did I miss? Uh, Persians. I don't remember the other ones. Anyways, it's irrelevant. Those are full nations. The next thing down is the tribes. So like the Gauls, the Vandals, that sort of thing. Um, and then there's barbarians. These guys are not interlinked with others. They will attack us if we come near, no matter what we're doing. There's no way to peace with them or any such thing. Uh, and, and so on. So I'm going to actually run up to this horse up here. Ah, there's another barbarian camp. Now, this guy has an option. I can harvest this resource, um, spend a, an order to harvest that resource, and I would get 30 coins sent home. That's pretty good. One turn for for 10 cash is actually three times as good of, as if I leave the resource. So if I, or the order. If I end the turn and I've got surplus orders still, which is not entirely unheard of early on, um, you may, You'll see at the end there'll be a message saying, at the next turn there'll be a message saying you converted that order into cash. You don't store them. Not yet. Later on there's techs and abilities to do that. So pottery is only available through an event. Oh, really? Porcelain is only available through an event as well? Is that what you mean by pottery? Um, Blood? How would I say that name? First time here. Thanks for joining us. First time seeing this game. Seems cool. Enjoying your tutorial. Thanks. Well, thanks, man. Um, yeah, it's uh, I, I love playing tutorial-like, and to me, this is the best uh, 4X Civ style game that there is on the market. I mean, it's not even a close second to me. None of the Civ, current Civ games are even a close second. The closest thing to come to this for me, for my heart, would be older versions of Civ. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my take on it. So I, I really do love the game. So thanks for, thanks for stopping in, man. Having a harvest scout is a good idea. Hey, Steg with a 10 pound donation. Thanks. You're doing great, Drake. Everything makes sense right when, though, 
<laughs> right. When's the war? <laughs> It'll come. Well, we found barbarians. Can that start the war? Now, there's there's a couple things I wanted to point out. This guy has the or ability to harvest this, which would give him 30 bucks uh, for an order. The downside is he's standing out in the middle of a, of a well of a pasture, uh, a horse playing field, which means these guys right here will totally see me and shoot me in the face. I could move right to here, and we'll see that if we zoom in... Oh, look at that. Honey over here by this city. Now, these are these are future cities. So this barbarian is sitting on a city tile. Most cities, some of them like this, it looks like you usually start with one, maybe two city sites nearby you that are empty. You won't have to fight anybody for them. So that's nice. Um, the, downs, the other option is that barbarians um, or tribes or other cities or other empires might have the tiles that's the only way only places you can start cities are on those uh already developed urban centers so you're not really founding a city as much as uh incorporating the city into your culture so yes porcelain not pottery okay that's what i thought you were talking a uh, game is uh this game is total war all the time well uh not quite <laughs> i don't think we'll suicide for that sake but uh what i wanted to point out is that scouts have this funky ability of being inside trees uh stealth hidden in friendly and neutral trees now i don't know if he would be able to be hidden here standing right next to the guy that's why i went to this option uh, for this option he's standing there he's got this little tiny icon right here if you can see it saying that he's currently hidden now he can cut trees too i forgot about that oh wait why doesn't he not get 20. Is that because he's outside of territory? I wonder if that's what it is. That would make sense. So you can't just run around far away and get the same, re uh, you know, on the frontier and get, uh, you know, you probably lose some in the shipping. That makes sense. But that's cool. Now, he does have the ability to cut the tree, even though he's used up all his orders. He's fatigued. He's used up all four of his moves, right? So Civ is such a dying franchise, it's kind of sad. Um, I like it. I've enjoyed it still. First impression is Civ and CK... Had a baby. That's so many people say that. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's uh, honestly, obviously a Civ game, a Civ style game, right? I mean, it's even developed by um, by the, the the family that made Civ Four, basically the crew that made Civ Four and some of Civ Five, I think, and I think some of them might have worked in Civ Three at sometimes, but they made this game. This is their this is their child, basically. Um, but the CK, the Crusader Kings, I'm not a big I haven't played a lot of Crusader Kings, so I can't really tell much of the details of it. And I know for certain that this is a far cry from the complexity that CK3 has for its, or CK2, or even probably the first one, for its, uh, you know, related to its sort of, it's it's a it's a simple, very simplified, let's put it that way. It's a very simplified version, if that's the case. Uh, so let's move this guy over here. Now we're outside of territory. Does he also get, oh no, he's going to do 20 wood from that as well. Okay, so we have two orders left. Now, we could use those two orders to start improving relations. Uh, the missus is 43. Chances of having... Oh. Family excluded from succession. Wow. Right. All of the... Right. All of the families excluded from succession, I do believe. Right? Yeah. So that's... Um, that's the gist of this story. So the, the actual history of this character, uh, Hattusili was his, his son, one of his sons and daughters or somebody tried to assassinate the dude. Um, so uh, I don't remember if that one was successful at some point, but he ended up making his grandson his heir. Um, so they're all really angry because they're not, uh, they're not in the succession anymore. So that's, that's not going to improve situations very quickly. It'll be very difficult to keep, uh, to keep the royals happy although we don't need to keep the royals happy to be honest inspiring with queen consort yeah that might be bad yeah i'm not sure that we're going to be able to do anything about that relations so i mean it wouldn't hurt to possibly bring that into not absolute trash situation this son hates us a little bit she hates us a little bit she hates us a lot and he hates us a ton maybe because he tried to kill me but that's a thing um but our our, our uh, grandson he's he's not he's not angry with me we could spend these two points my point is we could spend these two points to improve relations so i could click on her and i could oh 
No, I don't have the coin for it, so I won't do it. Uh, we don't have 200 bucks to spend on that, so what we're going to do is go ahead and use this magical ability these guys have to cut some more trees. Now, we could also add a general. That would take 100 of our training points and an order to do so. Oh, yes, we indeed do want to do that, because that's way better than the woods. Um, if I click here, we have our courtiers, don't we? Yeah, right here, court members. We have our courtier here. He is a court merchant, um, but he has some nice abilities. So he's got a discipline and four points of it, which is fantastic. We can put ourselves in there, um, and our two points of discipline give six XP per turn for this guy. So the, he's going to but this guy can train him for 15 points a turn. That's huge. So we're going to assign that general right there. Now that will lock him down for his, at the end of his turn, so he won't be able to do the cut trees. But this guy can do some cut trees. I don't know why he's less effective at it. Maybe it's just a... Maybe it's a thing that specifically scouts get less? Would kind of make sense, because otherwise they would be, like, always cutting trees. Oh, wait a second. Oh. Okay. Let's, uh... You know what? Where uh, do we do that or do we yeah uh, we're gonna do it we're gonna leave it he's probably gonna get himself shot in the head for that but let's end the semester anyways and see if he gets shot in the head anyone want to play multiplayer later just let me know in discord oh that's a great idea and i wish i had time to do that right now uh okay so this guy has <coughs> oh my goodness that hurt <coughs> ow oh he's a diplomat ouch uh, so why was he able to be... Why did I have the options to bring him in as a general? Well, there's three ways you can be a general. The uh, I believe the heir might be uh, included in this, but the, your, your king can always, or your leader can always be a general, no matter who the unit is. So he can general any unit, no matter wh what family part it's part of. Um, the other alternative is this family, or this unit, if you see the square symbol here, that's not just the... Not all units have that symbol. That symbol indicates that he is part of the Ictusen family. And, well, hello. Doug. Doug Butabi. Subscribe. Thank you so much, man. Welcome. Um, that square here indicates, and this coloring, indicates that he is part of the Hattusen family. So the families actually have a sway or a, a factor involved in the units that they're that are made. For instance, the um, we mentioned that the Hattusen family which are traders, uh, that the trader family units can, it says right at the top here, can add multiple roads per year. That only counts if the unit itself came out of a Hattusan city. So this worker has to be listed with this icon here that's saying that he's part of that family, and then he gets the option to uh, make multiple roads in a turn. All right, let's see what our scout can do if we hop over to this honey. We can see some stuff now if i do this i'm just going to test this if i hit that does that lock out his turn no he can still move so that what that did let's undo that so we can see it again <clears throat> what this does is i can tell him to harvest this okay each semester there's a 1d 10 chance that this regenerates um and what happens is if we harvest this or this or whatever we get whatever this icon is so in this case yes last turn yesterday we were talking about this thing getting us 30 coins well this one would give us th uh, five food from the wheat or four culture from the city so let's go ahead and oh did i just did i already undo it oh i didn't undo it right okay there we go yeah so we harvest it and you see the pop-up we use a turn an order rather and we uh Get to look around. Ah, marble. Okay, well, we could harvest that for a bit of stone. It's a thing. This would be a nice city. Look at that. Horses over here. Horses give orders when you put the pasture on them. It allows you uh, to basically get your uh, messengers messages around faster, which is great. I love how this thing's developed. Um, oh, we got two more orders. Let's let's check out our other units. So down here, we've got another option to, to see things. I have to use the undo button, but there's also decisions, like events and whatnot, that has to be made. You could cycle through your idle civil units. You could cycle through your idle military units. You could cycle through your scouts or and look at any cities that have things to do. Or you can just hit this to force the end turn, even if there's like a next unit option here. right? Even if this jumps to something else, you could force the end turn right there if you wanted to. Uh, on the beside our character here, well, we show our character's stats here, which is sadly zero wisdom and zero courage. Uh, but he has um, he has charisma and discipline of two. 
that'll develop as he goes. This shows that he's the judge. On this side is our list of orders, how we make them, and how much uh, we're losing. Like, you see here, it says minus one improvement construction. So if we would have looked carefully when we told this guy to build this thing, it said it was going to take, I don't know, three turns or something like that. Um, it adds one turn longer if you're building in somebody else's city. So if it's not a Hattusan person building in a Hattusan city, it takes an extra order, an extra turn. And every turn that they're building something is consuming an order. So they're pretty costly. Uh, worth doing, of course, but... Um, and this is our legitimacy. Legitimacy is huge in this game. It's a massive thing. Civ 2 rules! <laughs> I haven't played Civ 2 in so long. I played Civ 1, man. I was there. I was there. Way back when Civilization was just called Civilization. No numbers. Nonsense. You kids and your numbers. Everything has to have another number. L-O-L. -L. What is that? Anyways, um... The, uh, the legitimacy is a huge deal because um, achieving ambitions, which we'll look to look at when we get there, and doing um, acquiring better cognomens, which is uh, like the great. Right now, he's just the founder. Um, but doing various different things throughout the game, like if we do a lot of combat, we're going to get a cognomen that will be related to that. If we're super good at building science or, or laws or whatever, we can get different cognomens for each time. And that adds to your legitimacy. And that legitimacy, to an extent, is passed down to your heir. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, the game ends if you die with no heir. It's very difficult to do that there's nobody in this line of succession, but from what I understand, it ends if you die with no heir. I haven't had it happen, but I think that's the case. I could be wrong. Anyways, um, let's see. We got this military dude who's going to do some stuff. He's going to get out of over here. Head off to this lovely city spot. Now, if we move on to this city tile, I'm just going to test it. Notice how it says Hati. We haven't founded that city. We've claimed that tile as our own. I'm going to undo because I don't actually want him to go there. But that would be how you would claim the space. So we're just going to use him as a uh, pseudo scout for the moment. We have three orders left. So this guy's got two moves left. Let's head off this way. Oh, hello. Good call. And let's head to this lovely ancient ruin. See what we get. Great migration. Broken vessels and strange markings indicate that these ruins were once occupied by a tribe from beyond the sea. Not the sea, people! No! That's fun. I can't read. Uh, you can't read? Well, I'll read it for you. Yes, one era. What? What? One era? What? Um... Means lots of love, clearly. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, see, people, such a discovery inspires you to expand beyond your realm to new worlds. Uh, commission scouts to send them in every direction. Start ambition to ex uh, amb ambition enact exploration. So that's the actual uh, built law. And gain two scouts. Starts ambition, enact exploration, gain two scouts. So, okay, so I would get two scouts right away. <sighs> That's pretty potent. Or we get 75 science. We're making 10 per turn. This would immediately finish stone cutting. Oh boy, guys. Mm -hmm. I think we do exploration. The ambitions are great because A, they're build our legitimacy. Uh, legitimacy, I was mentioning, is like cool stuff. You, fa you hand on your legitimacy, but for every point of legitimacy, you gain 0.1 orders per turn. If you notice here, it says legitimacy plus 1.4 from legitimacy. So you can get like hundreds of legitimacy. And having 200 legitimacy gives you 20 orders a turn. It's a massive improvement. Yeah, I agree, Eric. I think getting the scouts is the thing there. Start at the ambition, enact exploration. That is a law. And then we gain two free scouts. Now, do we have the orders to use them? Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> but, oh my goodness. We got them right here. Oh. Oh, well, that's not what I expected. All right. I mean, I guess that's... I thought they would start at our city. I guess not. Oh, the numberless. A chief of the Gauls is brought to, is brought to meet you. The Belge, the Menapi, Menapai, 
the Sinonis, the Helviti. Our tribes are numberless. Too many to name. We are strong. What are you? I am your undoing. Oh, no. We're wealthy and offer riches. Hey. Uh, oh. Hmm. We are industrious and offer metals. We are clever and offer knowledge. We are mighty and offer war. <laughs> uh, do we want to instantly go to war with the Gauls? Gain six legitimacy. Was unafraid of tribes. Uh, oh. Oh. We are clever and offer knowledge. He becomes foolish. Well, that's not cool. <laughs> that's That sucks. Well, we're definitely not doing that. Uh, we're not giving... I don't want to give medals or, or or money. Money would be almost no no de no downside. Talking about all the great games that came out in... What is PS? Oh, in the PS1 era. One of my favorites, Legend of Dragoon. Love that game. War! I don't think war is a great idea right now, to be honest. I don't. But I don't think it's a terrible idea. Um, partially because the Gauls up here are the first ones that we've met. Now, we're going to get shot at the moment we declare war if we do. Six legitimacy. We'll do it. Six legitimacy and war! All right, that ends our orders for the turn. I mean, we get 0.6 more orders from doing that. That's good. We're not ready for war. No, we're not. <laughs> now, war does not mean they instantly send a massive horde to attack us. Um, at In a state of war, they're like more likely to send raiders at us, which is most unfortunate. Thomas, did I hear war? <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, now, this is interesting. We can't even get over here. The terrain is too rough for us to make it all the way over to this gem. I don't hate that idea because I think what we would... Ooh. We need more lumber. Well, we can get lumber over here with an order to cut tree... Oh. It is... It's got to be distance. It's got to be based on distance. All right. Uh, now, we don't have the... Oh, what? Why can we not farm this? Oh, what is this tile? Oh, it's a marsh. Oh, okay, hold on. Back, back. That's not what I... I thought this was the, like a lush farmland. <laughs> not at all the case. Um, yeah. What? How did we get lumber mills? I am so confused. Why is this on here? Oh, requires forestry and tree. I have no idea why this is listing here. But I guess it's normally always there, maybe? I don't know. Okay, so if we've got... Let's see. We we want this ore to get our iron supply going because we're hemorrhaging iron. We love this gems, too, to get both the gems active and the coin. We're making okay money right now. We could pop up here. It's probably the, the go-to. We could build the oracle, too, but it's going to cost us 1,695 coins. To buy out that food and stone uh the mine would require that we get some more wood so we'll use this guy to use one order to cut that tree that'll get us most of the stone of the wood we need actually all the wood we need we only needed a couple extra we we're almost there so let's make this this is 16 iron and two training per turn so that is a pretty hefty uh resource available there uh, next thing is our warrior over here. I don't know about uh, priorities for him. We've only got five orders, and I really think that uh, moving these scouts around is going to be important. Um, we want to keep ourselves hidden uh, when we're near the Gauls, right? So this guy is not hidden, actually. That's surprising. I thought he would be. Um, and I guess you're going to head back this way as well. Because I want to scout up here. I don't want to have a massive vision on the northwest and not be able to see what's right across the, down the river from us. So, that's some orders made. Let's see what happens with these gulls. I am concerned. 
that the goals might actually uh, cause us some... Wow, that is a... Okay, that's surprising. For a long time, the Hattusan family have expected to marry to marry one of their scions to Labarnas the Younger. But more recently, the rich merchants have offered a large incentive to marry one of his children to him instead. So our son that really, really, really hates us, we have to choose his wife. Are we bitter enough to pick for different reasons? Um, while our agreement with the Hattusans is, was informal, breaking it will still have the repercussions. Then again, money, is, money has all sorts of uses. Uh, he shall marry, this is the, um, the merchant son, or merchant's daughter, right? He's a drunk. Charisma 3, discipline minus 1. She's drunk, we make 240 bucks. Uh, if we let him marry the this judge romantic uh, with the you know, charisma and discipline and so on, um, we gain a relation with the Hattusan. Or we say no and the Hattusan get upset. No, I'm fine with him marrying that lovely lady. Um... Remember, games, Civ 1 that I played, great. I spent a whole lot of time on that. Uh, this game seems quite complex, loving it. Oh, good. Yeah, it is quite complex. Sea people caused a lot of problems. Yeah, the sea people were one of the, uh, were noted in the uh, Hittites uh, uh, anthology, if that's the right word for it. Now, this guy is interesting. You notice he, how he's different colored than this one? This person has no association with a family. They were an event-based one, so they have no association with family. They do have a cost, I believe. I think it I think it still has a maintenance cost. I don't know. Does it? Minus two from units. Um does he have Is there any detail on how much he costs to maintain? Scout. Yes, it should be in here, no? Hmm. Do scouts have a, a resource cost? Hold on. This guy has that, right? Um, consumes one iron. So, minus 1.5 units. Okay, so the consumes one iron isn't just one iron. He actually consumes 1.5 because he consumes 50% more for being outside of our, our territory. Uh, but these guys don't have a consumption, which seems weird. Oh, the worker's costing us two food. The other guy, scouts aren't costing us food, and the warrior's not costing us food. He's just costing us iron. Hmm. Did not know that. Did not know that. Okay, well, uh, now, how are we going to divvy up these units? We don't have a... We have, well, we have a fair number of, of moves. So let's let's move these fellows over here first. I do want uh, max vision there. There, we could go up this way. Well, that's some sweet visions. Le oh, that's scrubland. I didn't realize that. Hold on. Let's undo that. Let's move him differently then. Same, gonna give us vision of the Gauls there. They're probably gonna shoot at him, unfortunately. Um, so this is a scrub forest. It does not give proper uh, hidey hole abilities for them, so. Doesn't stealth them. Whereas this one leaves him stealthed. Aha! Hidden jewels. Our explorers discover a cache of jewels hidden deep in the abandoned ruins. The their orders are were to explore the lands. Would you rather they exploit the dis, uh, this discovery instead? Keep the jewels but continue exploring. 160 bucks. Or the treasury would be great would uh, be grateful to have if you yeah if we found more jewels so they already got us 160 bucks worth if we click this we use 100 um uh training and we get we basically turn 100 100 training into what is that 250 extra 250 yeah 100 250 extra coin I don't need the coin desperately. Hundred you, hundred orders is yeah. Let's not spend it. Let's not spend it. Stone, stone. Everybody must get stone. <laughs> no stones, not stone. Uh, we definitely need stone. Um, again, we could grab some like from this marble, 
but an order for four turns uh, we're, we're we're making we're losing two a turn which is not great but i mean we're not that desperate for it that we need to spend a whole turn to ah barbarians uh elephants nice and game let's pop into the game tile because that'll leave him stealth the barbarians won't know where we disappear to this guy however is out flailing and around and dancing like a moron in the right in front of them uh you have an order left you have a couple orders left we have no orders left all right turn in the turn now this war with the gauls is basically out well i was gonna say it's a cold war but apparently not all right there you go there is our our first settler and he's gonna head over this way for sure we're gonna spend those orders immediately to get him over there next turn he'll get in here we're gonna have to decide what uh group he goes with so we're not going Hattusen again because they're traders um they're, they're tradesmen uh not traitors traders um opinion bonus from distant cities so they like their cities being spread out but uh the other options again so let's think about this for this city there's some trees, there's lots of hills, there's a mountain's edge, and that's all we know so far. But this city, we could do the uh, the riders, which always is connected, which might be very valuable because it's not currently on a uh, on a river uh, on a river sequence, so it would not count as connected to the city. But if it was the riders, it would count as connected. Uh, they want uh, what is that? Salt, salt, and fur is their preference um the oh, the next family option would be the uh and i mentioned these so you guys can kind of think about it ahead of time and give your feedback um the next one is the landowners they have a rural specialist production time so if we built a quarry for instance or a mine here we then can add for those of you who haven't seen we get to go into the city and spend some of its civics production to add a specialist citizen so as the city grows and produces what's called growth that's different than food but growth uh the city grows it builds adds a citizen instead of that being something you place on a tile you have to build them on a tile with your civics uh then the next group is the patrons and they produce more civics per turn and more culture per turn for specialists and they are their cities are a little less uh uppity they're a little less discontented uh, there's a weird sounding this is this is happiness basically but the phrase is discontent because it's not they don't get positive happiness they're perpetually um either slightly either mediocre or discontent so we're actually increasing our discontent level um by um 10 per turn it's odd it is not connected which is weird because it's the capital Oh, no, it is connected because it's the capital, so it gets one less discontent. So we spend, in 10 turns, this goes up a level. When discontentment level goes up, um, this basically, uh, cities slower, slowly gain discontent over time. When the city's discontent bar fills, its overall discontent level goes up by one, which reduces the growth, the science, and increases maintenance costs. Higher discontent levels also reduce the opinion of the city's ruling family. Um, some ways to slow discontent include connecting your cities to a trade network, holding festivals, adopting laws which, uh, such as tolerance, keeping the city's religions happy, and building baths. So we can improve the discontentment. That sounds weird. We can reduce the discontentment in the city. Uh, but anyways, we got things we can do here. So let's look at what we want to do here. I was talking about specialists. This guy we could put in as a specialist rancher because we have a pasture already built what he would do is he would give um the the 20 food here is actually a cost an upfront cost that's not growth this is growth this is what grows your citizens um if you're doing anything in each of these categories so if we do something building a worker it's under the growth category we consume growth per turn 12 growth per turn for the 65 production required notice how the production bonus said has the growth icon whereas down here the warrior has the training icon the rancher has the civics icon where is it cost is food plus production is civics and then down here is also civics so civics can do specialists and civil projects we could do treasury it would cost us 20 stone as an upfront cost it take four seasons to do it then it would we would on completion we get 100 bucks 
which, eh, not very valuable. But every turn after that, you get 10 bucks. If you have Professional Army, uh, which is a law that we can enact later, it will also add in uh, two training per turn from the production of this thing, and we can do the next level of it at a certain point. Uh, festivals would increase culture per turn. It would give us a 20-point boost to growth for a one-time 20-point boost, and it would give us a one-time reduction of, of 20 discontentment. So festivals basically are a long-term way to increase the culture of your city. So as your city grows its culture, it reaches new thresholds. So there's five, I think five thresholds, maybe four. Um, um, yes. It were, uh, Sly, you actually have to have labor force in order to build roads, period. But the Hattusan or whoever the... Um, the trader families can always let their workers build multiple roads. And uh, Control R, I think it's Control R or Alt R or Shift R or something like that, lets you uh, path to tell it to build a road through to this. When you do that, it gets a, you'll see it. Um, yeah, 16 metal and two training is terrific for this. He's talking about for that miner up there. Um, the treasury or the festival or the council. So council is... It's a repeatable, <clears throat> basically it takes your civics, effectively it just takes your turn. Uh, they can they, they do nothing that turn except for produce uh, an extra four civics, an extra 3.6 uh, training, and an extra 6.4 coin in this, in this case. So 40% boost to all three, well, sort of all three. 40% boost to your civics, your training, and your, and your coin. Um, so if you have nothing else to do, great. You can do that. You can even put it on repeat. I don't think we need that. I think the treasury is a good choice for our cash income. Um, but I think even sooner than that, we want this for our, our culture. Uh, the other hand, on the other hand, we could build our rancher. Uh, the rancher is going to give us a increase of food and growth. It also spreads borders. Now it doesn't. It can spread borders. So if every any tile beside where your specialist works is placed, so if I build a specialist over here, it'll culture bomb in civ terms. It'll culture bomb every tile around it. So this iron up here, when we put in the iron worker later, um, he'll culture bomb the rest of it around. So that's how one way, you, one of the many ways you can expand your cult, your city. Um, now we could build a warrior. That might be a really good option. Um, warriors. Are great defenders just like this guy uh, and we did tick off the Gauls it's not a bad idea if we if we do that but I think I'm gonna go with the tr the rancher Be one of the reasons is rural specialists any specialist working in a tile out here rather than in an urban tile we'll, we'll see those when we get them uh, produce plus one science per turn right now we have ten science per turn we need more science per turn so uh, I think that's what we'll do I'm not certain that that's the best choice, but that's what we're going to do for now. It's Australia's culture bomb in Civ? Okay. I don't know the all the current meta, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying, yeah. Uh, the other way is through hamlets. Yeah, hamlets do the same thing. So when you build a hamlet, it culture bombs around it. Uh, there's also other ways you can get um, laws. We can look at laws in a bit, but there is laws that can improve that as well. So we have six orders left. A military dude is just hanging out here. Uh, we could leave him here or we could move him onto the city tile. I think we will move him on there in case somebody else shows up before we get our friend over here. It would be sad to lose that action, that city, just because we poked around for too long. I could go up there and spend a point to get the marble, but I think... Rapid Exploration is going to be the name of the game here. Uh, he's hidden there, so I'm going to probably leave him in there. Let's see. Let's kind of head up and uh, up and around. Oh. Our scout encountered a party of Carthaginian soldiers, whipping a man bound by his wrists and ankles. So we've met the Carthaginians. This is a contact event, a first contact event with Carthage. Um... Living a man bound by his wrists and ankles, 
The warriors accused the man of inciting rebellions, of stalking members of the royal family, and attempting to uh, infiltrate the treasury. <coughs> However, the victim insists that he is innocent of these crimes. Follow the advice and move along. We become cruel. These have some serious consequences. Sometimes tech cards are um, a border expansion order. Have a border expansion order? Oh, I'm not sure what that is. Doesn't ring a bell right now. Um, so there's three options here. One of them is a limited here because our character would not be, can't do this because um, we could, if we had the courage, our character is less, uh, has to be, king has to be greater than or equal to two courage. He doesn't have any courage points. He's got charisma and, and uh, discipline. So he doesn't get this, which is sad because um, that would give us, uh, we would become a deal maker uh, as leader plus 20% or uh, plus 20 foreign and tribal leader opinions. So every like leader of the Gauls and leader of Carthage and so on would have improved relations with us. Um, but of course we can't get that one. We would also get a court minister, which is what this guy is right here. They can be assigned as warriors or as uh, generals anywhere, but they also provide bonuses to your empire. So having more ministers is huge. Um, we could gain the court minister if we chose to, and that would upset Carthage for 40 turns. Um, we could ignore him and we'd become cruel, which again, hurts the growth of all our cities and the opinion of our, of our dude here, our diplomat. I think he's a diplomat, right? Yeah, he's a diplomat. I think we are going to, um, fight them for possession of the prisoner. We upset the Carthaginians. That's how we start things off. Ah, it'll it'll blow over, right? It'll blow over. No no probability of conflict with those guys. Uh, new court minister Belbad has joined the court. Uh, his aptitude in matters of state will keep Hati moving forward. Uh, he is a court minister because uh, and he is a diplomat as well. So we have two diplomats now. Wow. Currently, um, we're very diplomatic. Uh, anyways, he is a court minister who is also, oh my goodness, he has six points of charisma. Good gracious, lad. That's really good. So how do these points work? So, uh, Bruce, Bruce, let's check Bruce's comment here first. I'm making roads at all requires labor force. Yes. Once you have that, you can build one road per turn unless you have the special guys, uh, that have multiple per turn. It's very nice. Yeah, it's a huge deal. Uh, there's the Hattu, uh, the Ca Carthaginian right there. Carthaginian. Uh, Marauder. I wonder if they're fighting these this group. Cooldown hired once. A what? Oh! Carthage recruited this Gaul unit. Interesting. And that's what sparked that event. Uh, I'm going to pop over here, look a little further. Uh, that's not a great idea. Uh, we're out of orders, so he's going to get shot again. That's unfortunate. Um, the distance between a ranged unit and its target will affect its ability. So if I mouse over this guy, it shows that if he shoots me that turn, he's going to shoot for four damage. If I have me selected... No, sorry. Yeah, if I have me selected, I won't see that. But if, mouse over, if I don't have me selected and mouse over him, it's showing that if I shoot my dude as him, I lose four little ticks. There's 20 points of health total on a character. Uh, so that's bad. He's going to get shot again. He can heal up later. There's Carthage. Oh, that is most unfortunate. Whew. They are close. There shall be war. Um, so I was talking about point or uh, traits or these, uh, I guess, not traits. What would they be called? Um, yeah, maybe traits. They're not traits. Stats? Bonuses? Charismas? I don't know what these are called. <laughs> wisdom, courage, um, wisdom, courage, discipline, and charisma. Wisdom, charisma, courage, and discipline. Uh, those things basically, depending on who the character is, provides certain bonuses. So our leader has two charisma. Uh, let's see, I don't know how to explain this but easy. Well, the easiest way is to look, it's not linear. That's, that's the answer. Uh, if we have uh, two points of charisma, we gain four civics per turn. Our empire gets four civics here 
her turn from the king. We can see that up here. Okay. Uh, our court merchants have, has three, but we only get 2.6. That's because the court merchant doesn't give the same same amount per point. But this guy has three. This guy has six. So six isn't like double effectiveness, obviously, of three. With three charisma, our court merchant, our first guy, is giving us, our diplomat, is giving us 2.6. This guy's giving us 10.6 civics per turn. He's more than half of the civic development. He's got produces as much civics as Hattusa does. In fact, I think he may produce more. No, Hattusa has a production, civics production of 10. His is 10.6. Like, it's huge having that higher number. So if I had three points here, this guy has three points in charisma and four points in discipline. His four in discipline as a um, courtier is giving us 37.3 bucks. I would much rather have none of this and two more points of this. Or even probably even one more point of that. Like, it's it's a big deal to stack them. So if you are specialized, if you're a leader that has charisma, getting more charisma is far more potent than getting... A, like, getting one more point of charisma is far more potent right now than getting one point of wisdom would be. Does that make sense? Stats? Maybe they're stats. Yeah, stats. Yeah, build, Bruce says, to build a long road, you can use control R to make a path for that road. Yes, once I get labor, labor force, we'll show that off. Uh, so he's just hanging out there. Let's continue things. I'm trying to explain a ton as I go, so uh, apologies if it seems like it's a little um, laggy on, on what's happening. Uh, this guy has moved. He could move further. I don't know what's going to be up there, but... I, oh, oh, he can't. Why can you not move further? Oh, you've used up... No, you haven't. What did I do that he can't move? Oh, we're out of orders. <laughs> That's the thing. Science is always good at Forex. You're not wrong, Bruce. Like, all the time. And we're a painfully small science. Well, I'm used to playing as Babylonia. See, he just did four points of damage. Uh, our son and so uh, and have given birth to Turtesoup. Aw, cutesy tootsie. And the baby's opinion of me is upset. <laughs> Family is excluded from succession. So that everyone, every kid they have, that's why I was like, I don't care who we marry. <laughs> him, him marrying somebody that built the boosted Hattusan family relations is, is worthwhile. This is the family, the oligarch leader of the family. He's not a family member of mine. So he's not um, directly hating me, which is great because his opinion of me personally, this character's opinion of my character, makes a big difference with the family's relations. And the overall family relations between 100 and 199 is considered pleased. So each Hattusan city, um, each one of their cities, which is this one they've got there, um, experiences 10% less maintenance, and their units have 5% increased combat. So having a family that is, uh, military units' families in good moods is huge. Especially if they get to the next area, I think you get like a 10% bonus. It's pretty darn big. Uh, so let's get this guy. We have the orders for this. Let's look over here. And uh, wait, why can I not? I'm not seeing the... Oh, there we go. Uh, we're seeing the outline, but it's really trashy outline right now. Let's um, use some points to have some vision here. That's not enough vision, but uh, I really do want to see more before we do go any further. So let's have you move the very awkwardly, very slow way around here. Uh, he's taking his time getting there now because I just realized I don't want to place him until I can see where he's going to be, right? If I had placed it up here, I would not have known that there was a barley field, for instance, here, and big open fields. It might have been another mountain. Well, it wouldn't have been another mountain. But strangely, you can see mountains through the clouds. Because, <laughs> hey, you know where mountains are from a long ways away, right? I love that feature. Now, this is interesting. That's a gold deposit. Um, that's definitely going to be another another Hattusan village or uh, city center. Don't know who will get this one. Maybe the riders, because there's horses there. It makes kind of sense. This group doesn't have horses, but anyways, we'll see. Um, still have to figure out which family goes where. I think this might be... Might be positive to go with the riders up there. Don't know. We could go with the land owners or the patrons. Again, we only get to pick three of them. 
So the four, whoever we leave out won't get picked. Won't get won't, whoever doesn't get picked doesn't get angry with us. They just don't exist, right? Um, getting or uh, getting more ministers and courtiers is huge. It is huge. Uh, really enjoy your explanations. Do cities grow and expand like Civ? Um, okay, yes and no. They don't grow per se. So there's there's a few dynamics here, and we can go through this. Uh, we mentioned we touched on this a little bit. So what this city is right doing right now is it's gaining twelve growth. The reason it's getting that is partially two from the pasture, two from being connected to the capital. It is the capital, so that's weird. This count that counts it that way, but anyways, and a base because of our because of our difficulty level, uh, which is noble level difficulty setting. We get eight as a base plus two for being the capital or connected to the capital, and two for our pasture. So he's gaining twelve growth. Well, that twelve growth stacks up in here. Uh, the number in this case. Then when we get that built up to 100, when we just did that? No, when we get that built up to 100 uh, in eight semesters or eight S, eight turns, it would, see, it would say 8Y if you pl were playing one turn per year. Um, so eight semesters, that fills up. When that fills up, we get a citizen. That citizen can be used like this pasture guy is to become a specialist inside here or in other, in urban versions of that. The other way the city grows is through culture. As the city's culture, anything that builds culture, having a wonder, uh, having shrines that do it, um, in this case, having the gold mine here would, and having a specialist working that gold mine would also add that. Uh, having extra luxuries in the cities can do that. A whole lot of things can cause that. Gen or governors can improve it. As you grow your culture, you gain levels of culture. There are, I believe, uh, okay, there's weak, developing, strong, and legendary. So there's four of them. Each tier of that unlocks different things. Like, for instance, our festivals are treasuries. To get the higher level treasury, to get the tier 2 treasury, which is for some reason not cooperating for me right now. Okay. Don't know why. Let's see. There it goes. Treasury 2. That has a minimum culture requirement of developing. So we can't even get the second treasury until we get the, the city to grow culture. As the city's culture grows, <coughs> it takes more food to maintain them but they also start giving you a lot more things. So huge, and it's part of the victory point development. So that's another way of growth. The negative one here is the discontent we mentioned. Uh, if you're talking growth as far as the actual tiles, expanding borders, which is what he's talking about there, um, culture pushes city borders. Yeah, sort of. Culture pushes city borders. I don't think it does. I'm not sure how you mean by pushes city borders. Uh, I don't recall that being a thing. Now, when we build a specialist like this pastor guy or the gem miner, if we put a specialist on there, they culture they push the culture around them. Um, hamlets and villi become villages and sit in towns and so on. Those that's a structure that we can use to push borders. There's also the ability to buy borders when you use a certain law. So those are other options. <clears throat> Um, cities do not expand on their own from what I've seen. Citizens and hamlets do border tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, but they will expand almost automatically because many choices of building and expanding cities. Yeah, it, it, it does grow fairly, uh, fairly frequently. But again, you, you have many, many, many inputs in the process. Yeah, keep the questions coming. There is no, there's definitely no... Sh we, we need more questions in this game. I need more questions asked. Always. Oh, hello. You are, Oh, you're Carthage Slingers. Holy crap, they got a lot of them. All right, I can't move into their borders with my scout at this point, which is a little unfortunate. I'm going to move this guy down here so he stops getting shot in the face. This is getting hard on his head. He keeps getting poked in the face. Uh, let's keep... You know what? Let's go vision up here so I can see where their borders are and what they might have. And that uses up our orders again. All right. We need more orders. We need more science because we are horribly slow in building science. And they start with multiple cities and other things. Attacked by a bear. Two overturned wagons. Uh, we've just contacted Rome. Two overturned wagons uh, are discovered in a clearing. 
Their goods scattered across the grasses. A Roman woman and her children weep over a dead body. The survivors claim that a bear attacked them without warning. All right. This is interesting. We uh, have some pretty dark options that come available here uh, in various different events. Uh, promise to notify the nearest settlement of their plight could lead to future events. Provide the, sli the, su the survivors with guide, but send our people on. We lose two orders, could lead to a event future event. And uh, escort the survivors to the nearest settlement. Lose four orders. I think we'll escort them. Oh, baby, that's rough. Okay, now, big decision-making time here. We're going to use one order to go here. We'll use another order to get up here. Um, and up here. Oh, there's a shrine. Okay, that's good. Now, this gives us some idea, but we don't know what's over here. Which is really, really bad. Uh, can this guy get down this way to give us some vision at that point? Probably not far enough. Ooh, wine. Eight culture. Notice how we get some money. First time discovery of a place gives you cash. Uh, this could be a barbarian camp right here. And get a shot in the face. It is not a barbarian camp. It's empty. Ooh. Hello. You're building a rancher right now in four turns. I really want to shuffle you off, but I won't. So the rancher is going to provide us with um, two more growth per turn and ten food per turn. Uh, the growth per turn will then bring us to 14, allowing us to build this settler a little quicker. Um... Oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, okay. We don't have the... We do have the food. Okay, we have the 124 food right now. We add him, it costs us the 100 food. It's selling me that if I add another one, I'd have to pay cash for it. So timing matters. I want another settler up here. That's a big deal. There's, so two free cities and whatever this is. But we aren't, we aren't going to get close enough really to see what's going on here. We don't have the orders. Unless we buy an order, I'm not going to get to see this. So, unfortunately... Oh, this means... Oh. My goodness. We might need to buy an order. If we don't, and this guy goes and parks in this spot, we lose the city. We're going to spend 100 training to buy an order. For this guy to go claim this city. Dang it. Oh, I didn't do that, handle that well, but that's okay. Um, don't waste orders. On what? Oh, on the event? I really like events. Sorry, Eric. I really do. Thanks for all the info. How did you find Learning Curve? Is it steep? Seems a lot of fun. It is steep. Um, but, I mean, you can watch through content and you'll learn a lot. I would say... I would honestly say, this sounds totally biased, but I would honestly say start watching my uh, series on it or watch some uh, tutorials if you can find some good ones. There's not a lot of really concise ones. There's some very long-winded ones and very interesting, but... Mm. <laughs> Rural family should be on the settlement north of the volcano. Oh, I like that idea. What oh, is a volcano, isn't it? I just thought mountain and I just realized, yeah, it's totally a volcano. Ah, you're saying the rural specialists up here because of all the bonuses. Yeah, I like this idea. I think you're a smart cookie. Uh, this lavender is a special resource. Uh, it is a luxury, lavender. Um, and it needs a gardener. The wine is also a luxury, of course. Uh, but that one requires a grove and a gardener as well, which is requires a land consolidation technology. Horses don't game doesn't require it but yeah so that these two spots are available for us without working a without work without fighting for the spot so they're free locations oh boy okay we've got some events going on here marriage proposal has arrived from the Hattusan family for your daughter 
The one that doesn't, one of the ones that doesn't like us. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Um, how should we respond? The general, so he's the, he's one of our diplomats, uh, or the oligarch of our family. Ooh. Interesting. Oh, I don't even have a clue. Clue how, Not our family, sorry. We are not actually part of that family. We're not officially a member of the family because, yeah. That's not how that works. Oh my goodness. Uh, a lot of this is explained in the tutorial. It's not a, yes, I would suggest, highly suggest, going through the tutorial if you haven't already. Um, tool tips and the tutorial. You're right. You're you're spot on, thing. That's that's the the go to. So the tutorials walk you through really repetitive, really slow, lots of reading stuff. But it, if you're fine with that, they're very informative. They're right to the point. They get the the core information passed on. The most important tip, though, I would say for learning this game, is the middle mouse. Give the game the middle mouse. Uh, middle mouse click something and it locks this information. So if I'm reading about the Hattusen family, I don't just read a minus 10 upgrades to semesters to Hamlets. That means nothing to me. What's a Hamlet? Well, I can mouse over that now because I middle click this. I can also middle, miss, middle mouse that, and it'll tell me that it develops into a village, and I can tell what that does, and it develops into a town, and I can tell what that, you can just layer these on top of each other over and over again, right? And if, if I need to know, that symbol is money. That symbol is, like, it's, the tutorial stuff is, built-in uh, UI is not, I was going to say, it's probably one of the best. It's the best UI I've ever seen for a 4X Civish game. Bar none. The amount of information you get is just huge. Um, okay, so I'm not sure which one of these guys we want to bring in. Now, this would be not relevant. Neither of these are going to be relevant to the family, right? Because this girl is not part of the succession, so it's not going to affect the future of the family. So these events have a lot less punch to them in this case. Um, <clears throat> I think we'll let the uh, family member, leader, whatever, take the, uh, the bribe, giving us 80 bucks. Cool. So now our daughter is... This one? We can now click there, and it shows that she has a spouse. And her son... Oh. Her son is our heir. Forgot about that. Uh-huh. A little upset about that. For some strange reason. Um, we have uh, two idle uh, civilian units. <clears throat> this guy who hasn't settled anything yet. Because I don't think this is the tile I want to settle on. I don't know if it is. And it's not worth risking that there might be something super valuable somewhere else. Although I don't think we can actually tell. Hmm. Now, the comment about the proximity to the east, had we built over here, we would have got this iron, but not this one. And when we move here, these tiles being, these borders being relatively close to each other can cause them to extend automatically to collect the tiles between them. But that's not going to happen in this case. Now, anything on the bottom gets us the barley. Anything up here is going to get us more open fields and hills. I think the barley would be a good choice, so maybe we settle right here. We don't have the order to do it this turn, so we'll end the semester. Suggestions? Just found your channel randomly. Delighted I did. Oh, well, fantastic. Certainly check out your YouTube and thanks. Thank you. Yeah, the community uh, Discord's available there if you want. If you have questions and you want to do multiplayer things, it's uh, it's it's still in a rough shape. I haven't really fancied it up and organized it properly. Um, but uh, it's it's on the it's on my to do list. But you're welcome to join us on the Discord there. Uh, I'm really selling it, aren't I? Uh, uh, Steg and others are on there fairly frequently and we can get involved in sort of multiplayer or you can get a lot of questions answered on the fly there i'm always uh checking out what's going on there and any comments in the streams or regular videos will also get to my attention that's the fastest actually way to get a question answered uh even faster than discord for me prince 
Oh, oh, he's old enough to be tutored. Our heir is old enough to be tutored by courtiers. Excellent. We also have uh, discovered stone cutting. Uh, so we can now make quarries. If we want to do this, we could open up the ability to make camps, which would be good. Um, freedom and slavery option. Now, this is these are a law. These circle things are laws that are unlocked. Um, this one would open up the option for hamlets, which, again, is a specialty of our people, of our city. And walls, which might be very, very valuable. It's going to take us 12 semesters to train this, though. Yikes. We could also uh, head towards the chariot. And that unlocks a Chancellor. This one unlocks roads, uh, which we actually don't need right now. And I'll tell you why in a moment. We won't. I don't think we'll need them right now. Slingers would be great. They're the first range units. They upgrade into archers later, opening up the ability to have camps, um, which is huge. We have a bit of game, not a lot. The hamlets are fantastic for the cash flow. Um, <clears throat> like really good for cash flow, and our people are really good at doing hamlets, but growing ha growing uh, hamlets with our with our group. The walls is impressive, really important defenses. Um, for the chancellor and the chariot, I really don't know the best choice here. So let's think, talk about the laws for a second. Uh, we'll look into these in a moment, but um, we get an option. And whenever you see these in the science, there's two options here. You can, these are always an either or. So this um, unlocks one law choice between either going slavery or freedom. Each of them has positives compared to the other. And so it's, it's a choice either way. So in this case, slavery adds one disc one really loud really loud thing banged really loud upstairs Yikes. I think I think somebody dropped a bottle on the floor not broken didn't break just banged and rolled may have woken up a baby um uh, well this allow us to build roads but it also gives us the option for these uh, laws so plus one this one unhappy face per semester, that's increasing the discontent into the city. That's almost always, in my books, a terrible idea. If at all possible, avoid that, because that cascades. And late game, that can be huge. So 50 turns from now, that's 50 more points of discontent on every city, which is going to make every, but every family more cranky with us, and it's going to make all the cities less productive. Like, it's huge. Uh, so I almost never touch slavery. Even though you get four turn uh, more orders per per turn, it's pretty big, and it really builder groups like you. But yeah, freedom gives uh, science per semester per urban specialist. So not not a farmer, but a uh, poet or a, a military officer, the, things that are on urban tiles, uh, and the capital gains a little more culture. Uh, I'm not doing either of those right now. We need 400 uh, civics to, um, to use them. We do have a bonus of being in favor as the Heti people with something about us and laws. I know there was something about us and laws, but I don't remember. Nation the Hati. There we go. Uh, all units can remove vegetation, ignores hills, plus two civics per semester. Oh no, it was a judge, right? As the judge, yes, okay, the judge has a opinion uh, of legal code. So if we get legal code, which is one of the law options, <clears throat> not too far down the line, um, that'll boost the, well, his, his opinion. So any judge's opinion of us is improved when we have legal code. Um, and then, uh, yeah, as a leader... Minus 40 opinion if more active laws than us. So if, if the uh, Romans have more laws activated, I enacted than we do, we, we get, they get upset with or we get upset with them. Our dude is, it wrecks the relationship. Jeepers, I don't know which one is the best choice here. Uh, when the text pop up, not all is research. There are sometimes throwaway cards, add 200 of any resource, bordered ex uh, expansion free units, from workers, settlers, yes, yeah, just, uh, yeah, 
So none of these are that. We actually have one in the draw pile. Uh, we have two. There's stone boost and food boost. Unfortunately, there's two of them, which means we may very well get have to choose between which one. A boost cards and a free unit card are one option, one time option. So if it says we, if next time we get, or if this time we had the option to do the stone boost, if we chose not to do it, it's permanently gone. Um, now this green is not actually what I want. Let's think about what we actually want tech wise. Um, early on, having some of our, some of the laws would be important. So this is the one exploration, uh, move on waters, uh, units consume. No, that's not the one. Which one is it? Constitution and tyranny. No, uh, monotheism and polytheism. Those are important later on. Divine rule or legal code. This is the one here. So if we go towards citizenship and we get legal code, <clears throat> we get more civics per act of law, but judges boosted opinion of us, right? And so that's, that's, that's the conversation that was happening in the other one. Colonies. Oh, there it is. Colonies is the one that gets, lets us buy tiles. So if we wanted to buy a, a tile, we can buy any tile that's next to our current border by moving a unit there and then spending the appropriate coin to buy the tile, which then unlocks that tile and quite frequently unlocks a tile neighboring it as well. So freedom and slavery is an option. <coughs> if we get that law, we're not far from our civics. We're, by the time we get this thing, we would be able to enact that law. Science per urban specialist is, in, is not useful right now, but um, more culture per semester in the capital would be good. Drama lets music happen in the background, which is amusing. Um, there's actually sound effects going on right now, which is weird. Oh, a free settler card. <clears throat> I like that idea. And the Odeon. That's really good, but it consumes stone. Oh, there's a border boost. Yeah, discover all cities gain six border tiles. So uh, aristocracy is one I kind of want to hold off on until we get a couple other cities settled. I think we're going to have to go with trapping. Yeah, first tier text. Of, yeah, like having... Having these sort of things open, I think is what you're what he's referring to. But yeah, it, it's the quickest one to get a new tech, and I think that's the way to go. Now, let's do this. Actually, you know what? This guy could have the do the looking. Hello. Oh, we discovered this Mount Hassan. <laughs> we get to name it, and uh, we're the first major nation to see that mountain up close. So we get the name to name the thing. Oh, there we go. That is a major deal. Okay. So it's either fur or barley. You see how that changes the game big time? Uh, and up here, oh, and we named the uh, Caucasus River. Excellent, that gives us permanent legitimacy, which is no, no small deal. Uh, really good for exploration too. Um, but enacting, exp oh right, enacting exploration is our, is one of our jobs right now. So where's the exploration option? It is, Colonies and serfdom, constitution tyranny, vassalage and centralization, exploration, and epics. So exploration and epics. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, we're going to head to rhetoric then. That's, that's our better choice. So either of these, or both of these are needed for it, apparently. Really? How is that related? What are you doing? This is a prerequisite for a target? No, this is the target. Why is it saying that's a prerequisite? Oh, this is targeted as well. Wait a second. Uh, why are these locking the targets? They're not all supposed to be targeting. Uh-oh. That's not supposed to do that. 
I, I don't know why it's doing that. It's not. I don't think it's supposed to do that way. Anyways, we're going towards rhetoric next. I don't understand. Um, <laughs> do we even have a anything that we need? Administration. Rhetoric does not require any other tech other than this. So that's weird. I don't know what's going on there, so we'll leave it. That's fine. Go that way. Um, okay, more scouting to be done. Now this fellow down here can probably get us the vision over this way for now. Um, I think you're going to have to scoot around. You could probably heal at some point, but honestly, you know, is it that important? Probably not. Uh, as long as we've got the orders to keep moving, we can get you well and good out of range. Ooh, some gold to be, be had up that way. We also have a scout over this way who's just been hiding out in the forest. Chilling. Like a villain. Uh, okay, another barbarian camp. So much to see, so much to do. Now, uh, you know what? I have this guy I wanted to settle. Question is, do we settle up? If we settle, it would probably be best to settle up there, obviously, because this has everything plus this. It's either there or it's one of these tiles here. What is that? Lush, flat, but why is it so weird colored? Is it, oh, it's just, uh, is it shadowed? Well, because of the hill. We can see over this way because this is flatland. We don't quite see that. It's shadowed. It's like in the fog of war, strangely. We can see the hills are over there, but we can't quite see what's behind between these hills. That's interesting. There could be an enemy unit right there. That scout should be could be standing there. All right. Um, I'll just get the first tier text. First, that way I can make all the tree. Yeah, I like that idea. I just realized the tech tree is so unusual having to choose is quite unique. Mix of Civ and Stellaris, the way maybe. I the tech tree I like choices that um that force your hand a little bit. So you have to kinda it's it's not all open. It's not just I want to acknowledge I unlock this. That's not how science works. <laughs> you don't just you don't just have some idea. Like in Distant Worlds 2 that we've had got a series for going for the idea that you can look at today's technology and be like, okay, I think what I want to do is discover um, FTL travel. IRL, real world, what I want to discover is FTL travel or uh, teleportation devices. So I'm just going to choose these three different things that we'll learn between now and then to unlock this thing that's off a of distant Clark Tech. Right? That doesn't make any rational sense. So to me, the idea of a randomness to it or a decision process that's out of your control a little bit, to me, livens it up to something more valuable. I think the barley would be nice. And the fur would be nice. The fur would unlock some more content around the, the talent. I don't know what's over here, though, which could prove to be a substantial... Game changer. Well, we've used up our orders again, so ugh. higher educate air, air education, not higher. That's air. <laughs> Time passes quickly. Prince Mursili, our heir and our grandson, is growing up fast and eager to learn. How would you like to educate him? I'm going to go with philosophy because he's going to be our heir, which means he'll pump a lot. Any point that he can get into wisdom is going to notably improve our science, including like the first point that he gets from his schooling is going to improve our, our thing. So as the heir, his first wisdom point doesn't give us a point of science, it gives us half. But hey, he's a youngin. There we go. Attacked by a bear. The victims of the bear attack were delivered safely, oh, that was the four orders that we used, uh, to a settlement uh, of their nation, Rome. The village leaders thank your people for your kindness. King Romulus of Rome, you aided our citizens, plus 20 opinion for 20 semesters. Okay. Um, express a desire to cooperate in the future. Oh, and we become affable. Affable is, as a leader, one semester, one growth per semester per culture level. That's pretty good. Uh, the other option is, uh, offer to set up trade between our two nations. So we could sell, uh, basically, our, some food. 
Um, 1.6 food for... So, wait. That's a 10 times value. Right? We lose 1.6 food, and it gives us 16 gold. That's pretty good. That, well, that turns out to be for 40 semesters. That's a lot. <laughs> that's like 400 and some gold over the process of that time. But I don't know if that's better than the experience and the affable trait. So affable is considered a strength trait, a positive strength, rather than a weakness. Like you, you have weaknesses and, and strengths. This trait is a strength. You can only have a maximum of three strengths and a maximum of three weaknesses on a character. I think there's a maximum of three weaknesses. There's at least a maximum of three strengths. I think we go affable because uh, we could prove some serious growth to the to the capital uh, if we're the governor. We can also improve just overall growth in all our cities. Okay, we'll go that way. And he gets some XP. Uh, experience for your leader um, gives them new levels allowing you to get different usually you can add more things like charisma and stuff like that as your character levels same thing as your generals or your whoever's as they gain levels they can add they can usually be like improve a wisdom improve a charisma whatever first restart time slide <laughs> oops and three wars has started <laughs> Oops, did not read. Gave one city away for an alliance. That's a big oops. <laughs> Gotta read. There's a ton of reading in this game. All right. Um, I think we need to, for sure, get this guy going next turn. And our settler going. We can go over here and put dye on this. Or this fishing and for the dye. We could also put the gems in. Our daughter um, has given birth. Okay. Well, she's... Uh, She's doing the family thing now with the leader of the, the the family, which is interesting. Not him. Pointing at the wrong guy. That was the other suitor right there. The Shoemaker. Now, this up here, if you guys are, are new to the game, this little world icon is a um, Wikipedia link. So if I click that, well, it's on the other screen, but uh, Simon the Shoemaker is the Wikipedia that appears on my screen for that. Um, late 5th century BC was an associate of Socrates <clears throat> and a working philosopher. He's known most uh, from the account given by somebody with a really big name. He's also mentioned passing by Plutarch. So there you go. It's actually w real world link history. So yeah. Not permitted to enter the prominent city uh, courts. The prince, our heir, Mursili, uh, and his friends spend their days in the surrounding market with, uh, with an erudite shoemaker and his group of merchant philosophers, uh, learning the skills of philosophy and debate. While many uh, formal scholars refuse to recognize their teachings, uh, Mursili seems to have been enriched by these experiences. So... Uh, as a philosophy student, not all education uh, is found in the classroom. He can become witty, humble, righteous, or bold. So it's a random flip of a coin, which one of those get? Oh, I guess a four-sided coin. Roll of the dice, maybe? Um, scold him for abandoning his formal studies. He gains a discipline. Oh, mm-hmm. If we scold him, we gain a discipline. Now, it doesn't actually hurt the relations. Which is nice. And discipline's an important one. But I think we do this one. Witty, humble, righteous, or bold. <laughs> Sly. Game one over. Check. <laughs> Sounds fun. I imagine no game is the same. So these increase variety of each playthrough. Uh, very, very ver varied. The choice of your faction makes a huge difference in your, place, in your play. As well as the map is very much di dictating. Because of the way the cities are... are Force, force your choices. Like, a lot of the choices you make as to who's going to settle where and what family goes which way and whether you, you know, what you end up developing as an empire is based on the map very heavily. We're going to choose witty, humble, righteous, or bold. What does he become? Righteous. Okay. 
As a governor, he'd reduce discontent in the city by two. As the leader, he'll reduce discontentment in all cities by one per semester. That's huge for our heir. That is very huge. And also, righteous is a trait that will be... Um, so, this, th this is important to note. Uh, it seems like a minor side, but it's actually quite huge. Um, <clears throat> there are events that require an honorable person in order to trigger. So if your leader is not listed as one of the honorable, so righteous, gracious, royal, loyal, or compassionate, in some cases the, the events cannot trigger because you don't have that, or will trigger because you do have that, same as the seven virtues. Um, having one of those has the option to trigger an event. It also can have effects like we saw before, where if we had a certain trait we could have chosen something else in an event tree which is no small no small deal um i want more vision down here i'm going to go oh that is worth making the, oh my gosh yeah look at the farming this place can be our settlement capital so there's definitely no way we're going up here see i was thinking about going up there that would have been a horrible call so if we go here, that's also bad because this will give us two barley. Yeah, vision, it's important. Um, now, who are we putting in here? Well, I think this we might want the rural specialists. <laughs> uh, the riders, however, would be the bonus from the the give the bonus from the uh, contentment issue. Oh man. Um Mm. So, the, one of the den benefits is, one of the things you got to note is, we've founded this our first city with the Hattusan. If we found, if we settled this city with them, um, everybody else will get really upset. New cities will not be, a new city will not be, but skipped family seat, plus four discontent per semester. So, this is a very, very bad idea to settle the second city and the third city without starting a new family seat. Huge bad, huge no-no. So plan ahead. You'd be better off to say, if, oh man, I really have to have this uh, a uh, Hattusan family. Well then, leave a dude standing on it and wait till you've settled the other two. Like, it's that big of a deal. Um, I don't really think the Hattusans is the best choice here anyways. Um, so, we either go with the patrons um culture per specialist now it's per specialist that doesn't mean urban or er, it's urban or um rural specialists okay specialists boost the yield of an improvement at the cost of the citizen that's where you place the citizen uh, and usually an amount of food all specialists produce a small amount of science improvements without specialists increase the city's maintenance oh really Oh, I see. Learning, reading, learning, BRP, breakfast, and coffee time. Hey, enjoy the coffee. I won't have any. It's a little late for me. Um, that's interesting. So improvements, when you build an improvement, you should try to build the specialist on right away. Otherwise, you're wasting money. Interesting. Urban improvement specialists can be upgraded across three levels. Apprentice specialist, master, and elder. And we'll see that when we get some. But we get culture per specialist. So that counts urban specialists as well. Not a small deal. That or not? A, yeah, that's huge. This place would be fast growing and culture rich if we had these guys in it. Hmm. And it would be less. This. Oh man, and we get a court minister right away. That might be a good choice. Uh, these guys start with two citizens, which is a big deal too, and they get uh, growth per semester. <clears throat> Uh, any one of their families get growth per semester. They also, the, the seat, family seat can buy tiles. <laughs> That's not a small deal either. We would have to buy that tile to get all four of these Bartley in. Oof. Man, there's so many good options here. <coughs> Pardon me. Start with two citizens. Be able to buy one tile to get two more Barley. The specialists take half as long to train. 
Man. That place would very rapidly become a a settler producing. So the settler doesn't have to come from the city type. Like this settler came from here, but when he settles, he doesn't settle as an as a um as a Hattusan. So this doesn't become a Hattusan city because it's a Hattusan settler. The type of settler doesn't matter. Um doesn't determine which city it is. Man. <coughs> I want the riders. Uh because, you know, they're extra, you know, military focused stuff, but I gain a scout. Honestly, I think we might end up with one of these two with these two guys. I I think the riders might not get into the mix. This guy gets better rural specialists. Oh, per crop resource, too. Oh, good gracious. It's got to be these guys. I forgot about that. Because per two culture, per semester, per crop resource. So I'm thinking this gives us four of these. Or maybe it's just once. I mean, even if that's the case, it's still two more culture per turn. Yeah, I mean, they, we really have to go with this one. And then probably these guys uh, will end up up here. Thinking that's probably the way we end up going with this. Hurry projects with money. Oh, I didn't know that. Didn't think about that. Did we get a court minister on settling? These guys get to see. Yeah, we got to go with this. There it is. Tough choices. game is very fun and sometimes luck is with you sometimes it's not and that is the romans right next door well that's unpleasant at least we settled instead of having them so i mean having that scout walk by i'm glad i grabbed it because it may well turn out that we wouldn't have got it otherwise now they start with two settlers what we don't have is a worker here to build the barley so i think we have to get the worker and then we'll go straight to a warrior. Because, you know, borders, friends, not friends, frenemies. Move up here. Frightened families. A caravan of frightened families approaches your explorers. They explain that bloodthirsty raiders, must have been the Romans, uh, have been preying on them and they look to you for protection. How shall we help them? Join us and we will protect you. We become gracious. Oh no, yeah, we become gracious? Really? I like that, with two more charisma, which is huge, because we already have two, so instead of making the four uh, charisma, this tells us how much more of the item we get for those two. That's a big deal. Um, the Gauls? Minus 40 opinion, because he's a greedy bugger. <laughs> Um, okay, send uh, fighters to face the raiders. Warrior. Hard one, tough damage. What? We get a warrior? Or our warrior? No, our warrior gets guard. Yeah, yeah. The warrior that's there right now. Or we gain a scout. Uh, give us guides and we'll pay off your tormentors. Gain a scout. And spend 80 bucks. No, I 100% want to go with the Gracious. Because that's huge. 10 civics a turn. That That's... That's massive. Um, I kind of want to go up this way, though. I kind of want to claim this town before somebody else does. Like, really soon, because Carthage is right there. Uh, okay. Other civilian needs his turn. He's only got two turns to go, huh? Uh, can we? Well, we can't. We can't settle that. We, or we can't build on that because we don't have the uh, the tile. Trapping was a weird choice. Why did I choose trapping again? We don't have game, like ever. We don't have game for a long time. 
All right. Well, we can move this guy over this way to get the gems next turn. We could also build a stronghold if we had four laws enacted and we were developing culture and had 100 stone to work with. But, you know, none of those exist right now. This is a slow start. Very both the amount of time I'm spending in each turn is obviously slow because because I'm tutorialing the crap out of this. Um, all right, this guy's gonna come down here and start working on the gems, not a quarry, the mine. Uh, to do so, he's gonna have to spend for the wood unless we can get this guy to go here and cut those trees. And that's awesome that you can do that with his people. I love it. And that saves us the whatever 20, uh, 20 times 43. So hold on a second. We had undo that undoes the, that cutting. We select this guy. To build by this is going to cost us, because uh, we already have 13, so we only have to buy seven more. If I hold Alt, I can force them to use the buy command there. You can see right down here. Hold Alt to buy. It's minus 30 bucks. That's because I'm buying only seven here. But yeah, that's that's a big, big difference. Oh, redo? Redo last undo order. There you go. That is... no. What? I don't know what I what I did. We'll go back and do that. Cut the tree. There we go. Got our thirty three wood, and we can start the mine with that. So that's forty bucks off of that, and that's without the dude working. Um, and two culture for that thing. So th that's a pretty big boon. Uh, so now you did that. I'm gonna use one more turn and send you there. Now he is. He does have the general there. So what we haven't been watching is that he's already got the points needed to train with. Uh, we can't really see it here, but you start out with zero training and you have to gain a hundred training points. Now you can do that by spending the hundred training points you have in your, in your coffers to buy the promotion. In this case, he's already earned it. And the reason he's earned it is because he has the general at attached to him and this general is providing him 15 XP every turn because of his four points of discipline. So generals with discipline are massively good. Uh, he's got high charisma, which gives him a defensive bonus as well. If he had high courage, it would give him an attack bonus. And if he had high, uh, what's the other one? Uh, wisdom, I don't remember what it is. <laughs> I don't remember. Anyways, so we've got this training already finished. So there's four symbols here. We click on this and it's four options we have. So <clears throat> there's combat, which means all combat. And there, there's the symbol here is attack and defense. So the swords cross behind the shield uh, versus the item here. If I mouse over this, this is just defense strength. But when he's attacked, how good is he at fending off the attack uh, versus in this case, this is combat plus is attack and defense. Warden is plus 25% attack and defense went from urban. Okay, so if he's standing in a city in an urban tile and he's attacked, he gets a bonus if he's got Warden. If he attacks from an urban tile, not to it, but from an urban tile, he gets a bonus as well. 25% is huge. Steadfast versus tribal units. So this one is give, is the same as this one effectively if they both criteria meet. So if we're fighting a tribal unit, we get 25% bonus. If we have Warden, no matter who we're fighting and we're standing in an urban tile, we get 25% bonus. Highlander, if we're standing on a hill. I'm going to go with Warden because that to me is about the most powerful. Notice how there's a chevron under here. So if I undo that, that chevron's still there and there's a little plus symbol, meaning he's able to train. It's just a kind of little UI... Things like that that are amazing. So I'm going to go back and do that again. But anyways, Warden, now the plus symbol disappears. Now it says minus 165 if I wanted to promote. That 165 would have to come out of our training. But every turn he's getting 15. So I think his next, his second turn requires him to... Hold on, see I think, there we go. Um, it doesn't say... Where is it? It doesn't say how much it is by default. I think it's 200. Uh, for his second level. And then you can max out four times. Or you max out four levels on a character. All right. Uh, he's done. You're going to use this little command up here. And he can sentry. Or I can fortify. Um, it'll use up... If I sentry him, it doesn't use up a turn. Okay, But he'll wake up if an enemy's within five tiles of him. 
Fortify doesn't do that. Fortify gives you a 5% defense bonus per semester for up to up to 25%. So he can gain every semester he gets a little more fortified. It uh <clears throat> it has a one turn cooldown. Um but he is going to consume one order this turn only and then he'll just sit there for 5 turns. <coughs> Basically he digs in. Uh, who else have we got? Scouting up here, scouting over here, and scouting here. I think this is the most important scouting we've got set up to do right now. So we're going to do that. Look around at where, where the what and where the Romans are. All right, they've got a double trained warrior here with a hero general. Mm hmm. Who is this? Oligarch uh, Ilya the Younger. With bad wisdom. Okay, the wi like negative wisdom wrecks their attack. But he's got... Yeah. So a, a hero general is a great choice uh, because he can actually heal in neutral territory. So if you're damaged, you can use the heal command from inside friendly territory to gain 5 health back. The hero just lets you do it anywhere that's not enemy territory. Um, there and there. Uh... Let's, I, I, I'd love to do both. But, oh, we're out of orders anyway, so we can't do them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I recommend the game, but with a warning, have patience when playing and learning as much as you can. Yet, yeah, it's not a small learning curve. Rome is now at war with the Gauls. Well, that's, that's positive for us. <clears throat> Show respect. Mm. Okay. Uh, seeking to improve relations. Ditto, the queen of... I think it's Dido. Queen of Carthage arrives to address the court. And and there's no apparently there's no genuine historical evidence that she was actually the person that's told in the stories. It may just have been fiction. I'm not sure if she's legitimately she's in all the games. <laughs> that counts, right? Um during introductions she insists that members of the court kneel and kiss her feet as is customary in Carthage. Hmm. The heads of the noble houses, the two of them, notice there's now two families over here. And this one is, eh, they're okay with us. They want honey and olives, unfortunately. Dang. That's a frustrating mix. So we're going to get olives as a resource, but I don't think we can get the same luxury more than once. So we'd have to pick which family gets the olives. These guys get some pearls. These guys get honey. We can get both of those. We don't have all of so they're probably neither of them are getting it all. Um, the head of the family would be disappointed uh, as grumbling discontent passes through the crowd. Ditto looks for you to you for a decision. She walks in to talk to us and tells her my courtiers to kiss her feet. Hmm. If we had terrifying in this court, all bow to me. <laughs> she could get uh, suspicious from it and we gain 20 experience and 120 training that'd be cool uh in this case our people should not be forced to obey your customs she becomes estranged so that estranged or endeared or whatnot is a opinion a straight up opinion modifier it's an event-based opinion modifier that can come or go based on what you're doing and we would become proud with this which loses wisdom but gains to courage um, or we could do this one and we get minus 40 opinion from the families <clears throat> and she becomes endeared to us. I don't hate the idea of the Queen Dido becoming endeared to us for that time. <laughs> fail and fail and fail again, but learn as I do. Are, this, are your city's urban tiles city size predetermined when settling? Oh, so the actual urban tiles? Give me a thought on this, guys. Are we going to um, side with Ditto or or not? If we if we don't, we become proud, which is a which is a weakness. Yeah, we can have three of them. Proud's a weakness, which gives us two courage, but loses a wisdom. So we'd be exchanging one science per turn for uh, for 12 training per turn, which might be good. Again, this training up here is 
a little different than the city. It's not actually used for training troops. Original or building troops for raising them is used for it can be used for training them though. So we'll look at that decision in a moment. Um, but uh, the question on the urban tiles. So this city up here, or this city site up here, has five urban tiles in it. <clears throat> Those are the urban tiles you found you start with when you found. If you notice from before, we had the option of these seven urban tiles on this tile on this city. There's actually one out there too, which might get absorbed into the city. But th those seven tiles become the urban center tiles of that city. So, two, 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 two. <clears throat> Are you suggesting we go with the second option? Tell them off. We become proud. If that's what you're suggesting, let me know. All right, now uh, we have 11 orders and some events to do. There's that one, and then we can skip again to this one. All right, who's this? The Pankas is Hati's general assembly and high court, ruling on constitutional matters. Every king may be answerable before it, or even kings may be answerable before it, okay? The high court. As part of their upbringing, it is occasionally permitted for Hittite children to attend the deliberations. Oh, this is our this is our son, our grandson, our heir. Uh, at a certain point, they I think at age ten or whatever, they they lose their baby face and instantly become uh, full grown. Well, in this case, bald headed people. I'm thinking I'm thinking this is a shaved intentionally shaved style. So a little weird, but hey, um, he is a grandson heir of an empire or kingdom at least, sort of. Right now, he's righteous. We could add, uh, respect the law, respect of the laws is crucial to the education of all. He would get, oh, what the heck? Uh, okay, other friends come to join too. Oh, the other kids. Okay, so uh, there's no better school of eloquence. Okay, so he could become eloquent which is again one of those strength traits. Uh, in this case, as a leader, he produces more culture or more um, civics per culture. Right now he has uh, righteous, which gives us a uh, reduction in discontent per city. So he's already stacking up to be quite the good governor if we do that. Um, on the other hand, we do plus two discipline for him. Now, plus two is a big deal because there's a lot of events where having two e greater than or equal to two of something opens up new alternatives. I don't know who these people are, but they're just other kids that he knows, I guess. They're probably never going to come into play. They're parts of these families, so actually they would, would they improve relations with us? Probably not. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how that, that's kind of weird. So we either get t plus two discipline or eloquent. I think we go with eloquent. And then for the other event, second choice gives you legitimacy. Yes, it does. And legitimacy is good. Um, I don't like losing the wisdom. It really bugs me, generally speaking. But it is one point. Versus, it's basically one science for 12 for 12 training. I generally wouldn't like that exchange, but I kind of like it more than upsetting all the families just to get her. Oh, wait a second. This one becomes estranged. So she's going to be really not happy with us. Ditto's going to be uh, really upset with us. She's going to be below the upset point if we do that. But I think we're okay with that because Steg says so. Blame him if there's a problem, huh? <laughs> All right, let's see what's going on around here. Get a little more vision as we creep around their cities. Okay, that's quite the loop around whatever this is. I don't even know the name of the city, but you know we've 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 walked its perimeter. Uh, six more turns for the settler to be done there, and we have uh, four more turns for our worker to be done there. Trapping finishes also in four turns. This guy's done in three turns. 
We have seven orders right now, so let's get our scouts scouting, shall we? Ah, this black line here is important to note. If you mouse out on... Uh, no, if you hit the map. Map? No. I forget how that works. Uh, there. No? Uh-oh, what happened? That just minimizes the map. There's no bigger map mode, is there? I guess not. So, um, that's the edge of the map, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So Carthage is very much north, which means they probably don't have anybody another another faction up there and we have the Romans to our east and the uh, Carthaginians to the north and the lake to the west so yikes we might have somebody to the south too because there's a lot of somebody's in here so let's get this guy to kind of give us as much vision as he can around here okay the Z Zama a Carthaginian riders city this one is their founding capital I believe yeah the capital city is uh, Maganid, that's the artisans. So good culture growth in this place. Mines and lumbers have a 20% bonus. Minus two semesters to build urban improvements. Okay. Alright, let's uh, check out our other guy. He's got three orders available. Uh, one, two, um... Alpheus River. Okay, nice. Uh, I want to scoot back here to see if we can, what we can see. Alright. Let's keep uh, scouting towards the lake with him. Out of orders. Good. Uh, the truth for me is that event is always the second kneeling and kissing feet of the ruler seems wrong and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, Camulodunum. Mulodunum. Alright then. Now, I kind of wanted to scout south. I'm gonna probably do that. I'm gonna scoot you around and keep going that way. This guy is probably going to get cut off by the end of the world, but whatever. Ah! We discovered the scrublands. Nobody else has been up there, weirdly enough? Alright. Uh, create agent network in Zama. So, if we are near an enemy city, and we have a spy master... Uh, we can use uh, a bunch of money to um, to send the scout into the city to set up a spy network. Which will then give us, I think, perpetual vision in that place. I think that's kind of how it works. I forget the details, though. There you go. Last turn landing on a tree. That's useful. That was a very uneventful semester. <clears throat> which is probably not a bad thing. Yeah, she's really, really upset. We Hittites are people of a thousand gods. We don't deny the gods of anyone. Our gods, or gods from any place. As his tutor emphasizes the general uh, number of divinities revered by our people, he asks us how best to respect them all. Hmm. Interesting as a philosophy student. We should strive to never offend any of the gods, for they hold our fate in their hands. He becomes pious. I believe he's already righteous. Uh, gaining two, or one charisma, one um, courage. Right now he only has one wisdom. Um, or we become gracious. We must reflect the faith of each of our people for their strength is our strength. So, gracious or pious. Now, generally it's better to focus the one thing up more frequently. <clears throat> I think gracious will be our goal in that one. Alright, 11 orders and only the scouts to work with. Hmm. One. Two, three, four. Okay. The next dude to scout with is here. Two, three. Hmm. I'm gonna sneak around here for postal vision. Yeah, thought so. Probably could have got as much from the other side, but that's all right. 
and then this fine fellow who's going to give me more information to the south. Really aggressively. Ah, gulls! <clears throat> that guy's going to smack me right in the face. Um, Not a terrible idea. There's pearls there. There's Roma. So that's their capital down to the southeast. Uh, they are at war with the gulls, as are we. So I think probably taking out this gull town nearby is probably going to be kind of very important. I really, really like the idea of expanding quickly with military, but this game has done such a phenomenal job of limiting your options. That's part of, that's primarily what the orders system is about. It's about holding you back from doing the everything that you want to do all the time right now. Now, um, do, 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 do. Um, oh my goodness. I get, I'll read this in a minute. I just got a message that I need to pass on. Um, today my daughter told my wife that her birthday is coming up. Her birthday is Monday. Um, so Hannah told her that uh, if we don't have any gifts for her birthday, that's okay. She'll still love us forever. <laughs> and then she found a dime shortly thereafter on the ground. And so she gave it to her mom and said, this will help you have more money. <laughs> what a kid. <sighs> Love you, Hannah. <laughs> Not that you'll ever hear me say that in this video, I'm sure, but it's true. Um, during the royal feast, you share an enchanting conversation with one of the minor courtiers. The wine flows freely as the two of you talk late into the night. The reveling becomes uh, comes to a close, but your companion lingers as uh, as the rest of the guests depart. Okay. A ruler needs his rest. Um... Requires that he's not carnal, so we can skip the event if we are not if we because we're not one of these wanton, debauched, drunk, or romantic. Because we don't have that trait, which is a, a negative, carnal would be one of the weaknesses. Because we don't have that weakness, we can skip the event and have no effect. Or we can say, let's see where the night takes us. This is when you guys have to decide. My vote is for rest, because I'm a tired drink. <laughs> Alright, there's the poll. Uh, we will set a... Uh, oh, let's set a four-minute timer on that. There we go. Four minutes. You got your... Get your votes in there, boys. Four minutes on the timer. <laughs> All right. Now, I can minimize this. I like that the events aren't locked. Uh, okay, so we are on the mine here. We've actually got the mine built, which is awesome. Now, uh, in Hattusa, we have two places that we can work on. Now, one of the things that matters here is uh, this city. Where is its, um, where is its maintenance? Um, there it is. Uh, so 56 coins is the income of the city. We have it. We have maintenance. It's costing us 10.2. I wonder if it's going to tell us what that is. It is. Excellent. Um, 
We have four improvements? Really? Oh yes, we have a garrison because we start with a garrison in the capital. Um, so we have a garrison. We have... Huh. It's not showing me the benefit of having the rancher there. It says there's less maintenance from having... Um... Hmm, okay. I'm not sure how that parses out, so... It looks like the improvements are giving us some cost, but not showing the de benefit. Anyways, we want to put a miner there no matter what. Uh, this guy, however, is our road building specialist as well, so we could possibly do something with that. Uh, for the time being, however, we will look to... Um, well, we could do scouting. We could also get some work done on, like, other things. What other urban improvements could we do? Well, we could do the Oracle. We don't have the stone for the Oracle, though. We could build a quarry. In fact, I think that's probably a good idea. Let's go here. Now, if we build this quarry, this quarry has a cost of 20 iron and uh, one order per turn. Right now we have 13 trees. If I click on this quarry, we now have 53 trees. Because, uh, and actually, hold on, undo that. Yeah, and it takes three orders. So it takes one order for him to spend that each turn, for the three turns, so he starts with th spending one order. Um, but removing the two layers of trees here actually costs him two orders. It's not optional. You have to clear the forest, and it takes time to do so. I like that feature. So we get the 40 wood, but it costs us for as if we had walked around to cut trees twice. We're going to remove them both because, of course, that goes away for forever. You need stone, Drake. I sure do. So that's why we're building the quarry. <laughs> More air sounds good. Who doesn't like a messy family? <laughs> Three votes for let's see where the night takes us. <laughs> you people. Sorry to ask new questions again. No. No, you can't be sorry for asking new questions. Um, tribes, uh, nations, and tribes. Is that like civ and city states? Sort of, but not really. Um, in a way. So, uh, what we have here is a bar I mentioned these before and didn't, didn't elaborate on. This is a barbarian. This is a civ style barbarian village. Uh, it'll defend itself. Every X number of turns, it spews out new new units, and there's our timer. Really? YouTube. Really, YouTube? You missed him? Wow. Sorry about that, guys. Why did that not uh, hide user forever from the channel? Good. And remove. And oh, there we go. Gone. Apologies. YouTube sometimes doesn't catch these people in time. Um. Well, they spammed us before they spammed somebody else to get reported, and the thus didn't get caught in time. Um. The dangers of live. Uh, all right. Well, the the uh, the decision has uh, the votes have come in. Four minutes timer is up. The event is concluded, and you guys decided that we are going to let's see how the night takes us. And you're probably not wrong in the whole airs. Yes, very wow, YouTube. Yeah. Um, basically, from what I understand, um, for those who don't understand it, uh, how those things work on the YouTube's, on the YouTube's for spamming is. If that account and or things that they that YouTube can track to being associated with that account, if they get flagged by me and reported by me, which I just did, I can report them and then I can remove that content from the channel. So if anybody is being rude or mouthy or whatnot, you can air quotes ban them, but they don't know that you banned them. So if I didn't ever want to hear Steg say anything again or hear anybody else know that Steg was saying anything, 
I could click on a command and say, hide this user from the channel. He would never be told that he was being hidden from this channel, but any comment he made would never show up. It would only show up to him. So it's a, you know, interesting way to handle it. But uh, you report something like this, like the spam that we just got, and uh, the algorithm and the bots will, its bots will go out and find that information, remove it from everywhere, and ban that thing permanently. But somebody at some point has to do it on one of the first comments that comes out. So it's always, always good if you see any of that to report it as quickly as possible. Then it disappears from other problems. About 90% of the stuff that does get through on my channel, um, it sends me a message because the YouTube Studio app always sends me the messages and it appears there and I can see that it happened, but I can't even look at the comment because it's already gone. So that's, that's fine. Ah, that's why you don't see me. Who said that? What's that noise? Somebody hear a buzz? <laughs> I see. Uh, ooh, hi, crabs. Wow, that's quite the spot. This guy is moving more than a little dangerously. But he found a forest to hide in. There's a... There's a spot and a half. Pearls, three crabs, cattle, marbles. Oh my goodness. Jeepers. What a sight. <laughs> wow. That's quite the sight. Uh, Settler done in three turns. This city has seven turns to build its warrior. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Everything is building so slowly. <sighs> okay. Explore, 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 explore everything. Okay, this guy cannot do anything because we're out of orders. Man. <laughs> uh, our daughter has given birth to her third child. Excellent. Okay. There's the boosts. All right, so we've got divination again, which is an option to improve the uh, to get the shrines going. I think that would be valuable. The Odeon is also good. It's a culture building. Um, and then we've got rhetoric, which is uh, allows us exploration and epics. Now, exploration is part of our event. It's part of our um, of one of our ambitions. Okay, it's our first ambition is to ex uh, enact exploration it would take 11 turns to do that we could do shrine instead there's also this one which is a food boost now this because of our absolute trash science uh, our food boost would give us 200 food we would make twice more than twice that amount in the five turns there's no way i'm spending on this for five turns our science is bad enough as it is we don't need to waste five turns <clears throat> rhetoric will be halfway done basically by the time we do that. So I'm going to choose rhetoric because I really want that exploration. But I just wanted to point this out. This does not go back into the uh, discard pile. You see permanently trashed when discarded. I'm glad that we didn't get the stone boost as well because I might want the stone boost one. But still, that many turns is always tough. Ooh, little round symbol for these guys. Excellent. Okay, so now we have a worker here. Now this worker can go... Uh, improve a tile. I'm going to bring him down here to improve this one specifically. Way better than improving this one. Because if I improve this one and then I put a worker on this one, or a, um, a citizen on this one, he will culture bomb this set. Over here he'd culture bomb, oh, over here he'd culture bomb this towards the ruins. That's not a bad idea. Uh, hold on a second. Let's back that up for a second. There's another option. Uh, what was it? No, we have to have colony colonization for that. Oh, this is fur. This I thought this was a game. It's not. It's fur. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Hmm. That's really good. Now, we'll get that when we can buy... See, that's what I thought it was up here. Game. Now, we got two, built, two dudes to put on spots. Uh, I think we'll go down here right away. We'll put the farm in. Okay, so this is a really good farm. All right. Plus two semester from Barley. 
plus two, uh, sorry, plus two growth per semester from being barley, which is the, the benefit of that. It also gives food. The farm gives five. It's on barley, gives another five. 40% 40, 40 increase because it's on a lush tile. That's nice. Uh, but more than the food, we get two things. We get the plus two per semester um, culture. And the question is, when we build that one, does the next one over have the option to give that? I don't know. I don't know if the second one's gonna do the same thing. And that will be a big deal. On wealth. In uh, Mercilli's philosophical studies, his tutors ask him to discern the nature of a good life. He has reached the conclusion that material prosperity um, in a crass dis uh, is a crass distraction from the true purpose of being. Excited to present his thoughts on the matter, he asks our opinion on wealth. Well, that's just plain and stupid. <laughs> Material prosperity is not a crass distraction at all. That makes no sense. Think that one through. <laughs> I won't go any further than that. Um, he could become ascetic. Now, he cannot marry, cannot have children, cannot govern, and uh, yeah, no terrible idea um or that's a uh, simple and pure life is best totally terrible idea for a dude indulge in his in the pleasures of life would make him become debauched he would gain charisma but he would become debauched which is the negative which is the opposite of righteous so he goes from righteous to debauched which is a terrible twist so sounds like we're going to go with whatever this option is as long as it doesn't kill him uh, dis a disciplined uh, purse is the way to life. See? Smart. Smart. If you agree with this idea, then you've never been poor. That's as far as I'll talk on that. Okay, so he'd lose one charisma uh, and gain a discipline. Well, that's unfortunate. Lose a charisma? Yeah, he'd lose a charisma. Eh. I mean, not horrible. We, just, we lose one civic per turn. Not a big deal. Gain eight bucks, but more importantly, we don't get the trash from the other two. Marriage proposal has arrived from the family for our son, Pimpera the Compassionate. Okay, also not part of the succession. Um, how should we respond to the suggestion? Uh, this one gives a 50 wood dowry and the 10 bonus relations for the Nanasan people. That's the second city. Uh, this zealot, pious, spoiled person um, would give a 20 stone dowry or wood dowry. And uh, uh, oh, and she would also probably be able to be a general. Interesting. <coughs> uh. Is get should be builder. Hmm. Now I don't know if she's a governor. What does charisma do as a governor? Ah, civics production reduced in the city. Okay, and the other so this girl is oh hi, she's got a lot of bonuses. So she could be a general or chancellor, not a governor. The other one, can, they can both be chancellors, which is this, this one here. Uh, it's one of the members of the council that you can get. Oh, man. Um, the five courage is really good. As a governor, that increases the, oh, this is good, the military development of the city. So this is the number of, the amount of uh, training that that city puts out. 6% less money, 6% more civics, 42% more training, and 6% less science. I think we found your bride, buddy. I think we found your bride. Because uh, she can be, if she's part of a family, she can be a governor of that city. Of a city for that family. So that's pretty good. Um... 
Can you ask about barbs and tribes again? Got interrupted by... <laughs> I did, didn't I? Thank you for reminding me. I do get interrupted frequently. So we're going to minimize that conversation for a second. And we are going to deal with this. Oh. Well, speaking of barbarians, that's not one anymore. Notice this. This is Utica. That is a Carthaginian city now. Holy crap. We are in trouble. <laughs> this may be a one-day stream. <laughs> We'll get ransacked by these guys. Okay, uh, so a barbarian is basically a independent bunch of hooligans that are relatively easy to wipe out. They'll slowly reproduce, you know, every six or ten or whatever. I don't know how the number is. Every certain number of turns, they'll produce a new unit. If you go anywhere near them, that unit will attack you. Sometimes that unit, they will actually, I don't know if they send raids, but they might which would be a turn in one of their units. I think when they get a certain number of units, the next time that they would produce a unit, instead it sparks a raid, which sends basically half of their units as it turns them into raiders, which then beeline for your, your territory and try to attack you. They're basically just there to be wiped out, and they're irritating to be around, to have around. Okay? Um, the Gauls are similar in that they produce new units. They, they level up their... Uh, improvements so this is a uh, hovel and um, develops into an outpost in 10 to 20 turns so at some point it will upgrade from that to a tougher version somewhere I don't know if there's an example of it probably isn't um, they'll upgrade regularly to a tougher version eventually start putting out elite versions of their units um, and the Gauls all of them are linked so politically speaking, all of one tribe is linked. So there's a Gaul down here. We're at war with the Gauls, all Gauls. And if the Gauls as a whole get angry with us, they're more likely to produce raiding parties that they send after our people. Okay, we can see that um, somewhere in here. I don't remember where it shows. Uh, I don't know that it does, actually. Um... Yeah, I don't think there's a way to see this, but the cities can have can spark a raid. Basically, these guys might decide to raid here. So when they guilt, build enough units, they're more likely to send a raiding party at you, basically. I don't know the actual mechanic and how it pans out, but that's what the, the deal is. And then a nation would be like the Romans and the Carthaginians. Those are competitive empires to yours. They're full-on AI empires with tech trees and all the rest. The Gauls, for instance, don't tech up, specifically. All right, fruit. I hope that covered the things for you. Sorry I'm late. Hi, all. Hey, Mr. B. Welcome. Nine months ago, the morning after a great royal feast, you woke up next to one of your minor courtiers. The affair was short, but fruitful. Your new child cannot inherit the throne, but it will surely be a blessing to your household. This is a blessing to us all. As an illegitimate child becomes estranged, the queen becomes estranged to us. Yeah, her opinion didn't wasn't good to begin with. And it just got a lot worse. You have a new illegitimate son. Hosea. He is listed as bastard, which means he cannot marry, <clears throat> and he can't is excluded from the succession. But pretty much all of our kin are are are, are that way, so you know. Now, she's now at minus 190. That's conspiring and... Uh, and she's... Yeah, she's not... You're not happy with us. We have... We have caused some grief. Ah! That's a bad place to be standing right now. All right, well, there's a barbarian camp there. I think this is coastline, and this is Gauls. We have this city that as long as we don't get war declared on us... We can hold this city site until we get a settler that we want to put there. This is a barbarian camp we want to knock out, and this is a Gaul camp we want to knock out. I want those five cities before we go any further, or before we get involved in any actual wars. To accomplish that, we're going to probably have to do some pretty fancy footwork. I don't know how we would be able to do that, to be honest. <clears throat> now, something I could do uh, next turn is get start improving relations with this guy. 
Oh man, we are so moving slow. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, uh, that's just noticing that. We basically haven't been in this area, so we don't see the update on the map. Right? We can see what's going on in Carthage, or in this area, because of our scout. He can physically, he's close enough to see what hap what's happening in there, so we can see that they're building different things and so on. Right? We see that they've got farms here. Um, and a worker working up there to make a... Oh my goodness. So sorghum is a bean, I believe, right? Or no, it's a grain. Yeah, it's a grain. But look at it. Oh, there's a bit of it there. Yikes. All right, and that's Messer. Yay, more fun airs. Exactly. Dinner with rivals. Delegation of Rome is sent <coughs> to help settle a minor dispute that is brewing between your two nations. At dinner, one of the party, one of their party speculates on who could beat the god of gods of war, leading to a spirited debate. They put forward King Romulus the Learned of Rome as the best candidate. Some others visiting dignitaries suggest oligarch um, Umashtart the Deceitful. Oh, she's a Carthaginian. Okay. Requires that Rome has greater than two courage. <clears throat> well, don't be so courageous, Roman. You're causing me grief. Uh, we can agree that he is the primary or oh look we've got charming ha <laughs> ha surely it is foolish to compare mortals to immortals there's the option uh this either one of these is going to tick off one of them basically we get endeared to one and disappointed from the other so disappointed is minus 80 endeared is plus 80 um neither of those do i want in my face right now we can't war anything when uh when we have two little villages and one warrior so uh it would be foolish to compare mortals to the gods we also get 40 experience which is nice all right now how the heck are we gonna build this faster well this guy's done in one turn building the quarry here that's good because we'll actually have a positive uh, stone production for for the first time ever our only stone production. The barley here will allow us to build our settler worker there. Uh, one more turn on our settler here, and then I think we're gonna have to build that miner. I'm not sure what the delay is. Oh, there's two of them. We want the iron, we want the gems. Costs a citizen. Oh, we're not growth. We haven't grown enough to get a citizen here. Oh, jeepers. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, because we're building settlers, and that consumes the growth. Uh, all right, vision there. Um, down here, up into the forest here. Oh, dies in the wood. In the there. let's have a look out here and fish. Oh my goodness! I mean, there's some absolutely gorgeous terrain around here, which is I'm not complaining about it. We just need the ability to actually get it. Right now, we ain't got that. Looks like that might be the edge of the Carthaginian lands. Might be. Mind you, they're down here too. We want to have a look at this. So this guy's got, uh, as a note, he's already got his fortified 25%. So that that's something. He, as long as he stays there, he's uh, he's good for a while. This fine fellow can have a look down at the Gauls' lands. How many orders you got? One left? Go hide in the trees there. I don't think he can be seen there. There's some more pearls. Dyes, pearls, fish is not a luxury. Uh, crabs is not a luxury. So we'll have access to dye and pearl for sure at some point here. Uh, elephant isn't a luxury. And there's barley. Huh. And there's horses or cattle. Marble is not either. Alright. Honey is a luxury though. And fur is a luxury. Lavender is a luxury. Wine is a luxury. Alright. 
I mean, we'll, we'll, we should be okay for that. Just gotta keep ending semesters. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh my gosh. We are in some troubles. Uh, what was that? Did they just, did they just take my scout? How did... But they just randomly moved onto that tile? That seems a little weird. Um, okay. His mother's disposition. Representatives from the academy arrive at the court bearing news that Prince Mursili uh, has been well and turning out to be as wise as his mother. Good. Gain a wisdom point. Excellent. It's time to choose your next ambition. What shall the future... Uh, what should be the future direction of the Hati? Control six farms. That would uh, in, that would in, you know improve relations with the uh, with the uh, landowners. We could also do complete two caravan missions. I do want to do that actually, but Hattusen would be required to do that. In this case, six farms is something we are going to do by default. I think we'll go with these guys. <clears throat> uh, we're 100% going to do that. Now, we could go up here and settle this city, um, but I want these two. At the same time, we're not going to be able to settle up here. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Uh, we're not going to be able to do uh, any settling down there anytime soon, because we simply don't have the uh, manpower to do so. Or, yeah, the manpower to take that out. Once we settle this, we can hopefully move that warrior. You know what? We're going to interrupt his regularly scheduled standing aroundness and go scout to make sure we've got vision there. I hope that doesn't let me lose that city. I really hope that didn't let me lose that city. That would be terrible if it did. Um, it'd be very good to have a military unit here. We're going to do festival though. Because we need the culture growth. Uh, we can also attach a governor here. Now, that's an interesting choice. This guy is currently acting as a general. He would give... because So these, these bonuses they're giving here is based on the uh, character that we've got there. So if I look down in the bottom right here, it's going to show wh whoever I'm moused over. Um... So being the governor is also going to improve the character. So this general or whoever we put in there, this minister, if we put him there, he's going to gain experience per turn. When he hits 200, he's going to gain four experience per turn. When he hits 200, um, <clears throat> he will uh, be able to add something to his traits. In this case, 5.6 civics is not a small amount. We're at 715 civics right now. Jeepers. Uh, looks like um, having us there would give three civics, uh, four growth, 3.3 .3 training, 6.7 cash. We kind of need to do this. Do we have the capacity to have ourselves put ourselves in there? We're the only one really good at this. So let's put ourselves in as the governor of the city. Um, could we possibly get some benefits from having somebody over here as a governor as well? Uh, oh wait. Oh. What the heck? I thought... Oh. I guess our spouse... Was it this guy that, uh... Yeah. He married... Her... But she is not able to be anything in the family. Oh, well, she can't be governor. What? Well, sure, we gave him the uh, a wife that would be a governor. Oh, but he's Hattusen. Yeah, she's... She's a zealot. Okay. I thought she was a... I looked at these numbers and thought... Uh, what I did is I moused over courage and says as a governor... 42% courage or bonus to training. 
but I didn't notice that because she's zealot, zealots can't be governors. They can be generals and chancellors. Unless they're a... Um, not family. Unless they are in the court as a courtier. Any courtier, no matter what they are, can be a general. Oh, that's too bad. Darn. Okay, so we don't have an option here. It's not flashing. We don't have an option. Oh, requires garrison or stronghold. Right. We start, the, city, the capital always starts with the garrison. That's required to assign a governor. And it's required to build uh, the stronghold, which is vital for unlocking your specialty unit. All right, this quarry is done. That's great. Um, there's nothing else within my borderline. It's hard to see, but as we mentioned before, but nothing else within my borderline that's urgent to do. However, I'm going to look at what would be the options here. Just the stronghold, eh? We could buy that out. No, we can't. We need uh, laws. Need four laws enacted for that. I'm going to go over here, and we're going to do the quarry thing again. Uh, or we're not. Wrong button. Now that's shift for later. Why can I not? Oh, I'm out of orders? Yes, I am. Okay, so what he's going to be able to do is, you know, nothing. Go we'll back up a second. Um, scout, good scout. This guy is still available to scout. This guy, oh, he got moved. This unit moved from here to here, so it bumped me. I have two orders. <clears throat> oh, one moves us here to meet the Greeks. Reports are beginning to arrive about the Society of Greece after a recent encounter. They seem to have very different morals and standards than us, and do not uphold the same values as us. All right, who am I to judge them? We maintain the initial truce. I condemn them. The penalty is death. And we go straight to war. No, no, we're going to just truce. There's no, that makes no sense to go to war with them. Well, let's have a look up here. Barbarians being smashed apart by the Greeks. Yeah, man, we are going to be on, we're going to have to have uh, traditional Hittite uh, starting with really, really low uh, early growth and, and back and forth instability. And then hopefully we can boom. <laughs> Luxurious barley. Yeah, barley don't have yeah, no but luxuries. The royal family of Greece visits the court. During the feast, Prince Alexander, the hero of Greece, makes a shocking boast about how much better a ruler he will be one day. Ah, uh, yes. Alexander, the hero of Greece. Um, <clears throat> King Philip the Able of Greece chides him for his brashness and turns to us for support. So he's 48 and he is 22. Interesting. I would say King Philip might actually live long enough um, live long enough to become more great than Alexander the Great. So we start, Greece starts with Philip as the king. And the heir is Alexander the Great, or the not so great, um, because he'll never he may he as a hero archetype, but he may or may not gain power, and the 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 course ahead is very randomized. Uh, Ale Alexander's youth reve uh, reveals his great ignorance, so this would improve our relations with the son, who is the heir, for twenty semesters. Um, sorry, no, that would improve the relations for, for 20 semesters with the king, but permanently reduce the relations with the, with the prince. Without a doubt, Philip is a laughingstock, <clears throat> so he would get upset for 20 turns, but again, a permanent boost to Alexander. Uh, I must sleep. <laughs> Delighted to have found your channel. Thanks for joining us, man. How do, is it Bud? Buddha? Bude? Buddha? I don't know how you how to say your name. Is it like the, the, the little fat statue guy? Or... I don't know. Uh, delighted to have found your channel, and thanks uh, to you and your community. Will this stream be available to watch again? Yes. Um, these streams are perpetually available. 
That's one of the wonders of YouTube for me. Um, it's available, and after the stream, if I set it up properly, if I remember, uh, it's monetized after that, but the only that's the only thing that changes. So you might get advertisements on it. Uh, I don't do any mid-roll advertisements ever on anywhere on my channel. You will get advertised at the beginning, and if you have the patience and uh, and would love to uh, share the share some uh, advertisement wealth, uh, you're welcome to watch them, but you will not get mid-roll advertisements on my channel. If you get them, it's YouTube forcing it, not me. Um, but yeah, it's always available there. You can, it'll be in a uh, past live streams um, uh, list. There's a playlist of all our past live streams. These ones, if they become popular enough and we do enough of them, will go into their own playlist at some point. So, again, thanks, uh, Buddha, for joining us. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we rule well, or you rule well, and so will Prince, Prince Alexander the Hero. So Charming allows us to do the double, the both options. However, that's only for 20 turns. If we do this one, the king, current king gets upset, but the but Alexander the Hero has a permanent relations with us. <clears throat> Wait. The health of the king is down. He is now 111? How is he 111? Hmm? Who's 111? Uh, let's leave this for a minute. I'm thinking we support uh, Alexander, though. Other events. Leveraging luxuries. Okay. Uh, Greece contacts you with an intriguing proposal. If you willingly to part with some of your luxuries, they'll happily round out your court with either a talented trader or minister. What do you say? Uh, Greece is greater to or equal than cautious. Um, he's at least zero to nine, zero or above in relations, um, and that uh, uh, is required. Uh, we could certainly see our way uh, clear to do that if it means adding a new merchant to the court. Send the porcelain to Greece. Remember that porcelain we got? Give us a court merchant. Or we could send it to Greece to make uh, a court minister. <clears throat> this is interesting and a little cheesy. <coughs> right now, his relations with us is what? What is his opinion? Opinion of you is cautious zero. If he goes below zero, we can't do that. This event is not available. So if we do it now, however, we get either 40 experience or we can send in the porcelain to uh, get a court minister or a court merchant. <laughs> Interesting. Very interesting. Because we can do this ahead of the other one. Restless leader. <clears throat> Recently, uh, you left a certain, uh, felt a certain restlessness. You simply aren't content and w to wait about the home, bored by the um, mundanity of palace duty and court ceremony. Being a judge. You're eager to, eager to travel out in the world and study the legal systems of foreign lands. Shall you set out into the world at large on a grand adventure? Oh my goodness. Assemble the royal caravan we ride at dawn. He becomes exploring. Exploring removes him as the leader, I believe. I think he wouldn't... Wise men say stay home. What? Oh my gosh. Seriously? Another one? Wow. That was... At least I was looking at it at that time. They only got two of them in. <clears throat> All right, so what do we do? 
this is interesting. I'm curious if we do this, if this leave, if we leave, like, do we leave the court? Cannot be a governor or general or on the council. But are we still the king or do we hand over leadership to our son, our grandson? Yeah, yeah, they, they oopsed again there. Apologies for you guys and for later. Charming is amazing for dealing with so many bad issues. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Okay, this one needs to be discussed. We could stay home and gain a wisdom point, which is good. It'll get us some science and uh, our military, you know, um, some experience for our military unit, I think. <clears throat> He's still listed as the founder. That's how poorly this start has gone. Like, really, really bad. He killed it, I think. He killed what? The bot? The spammy bot? My goodness. I've never had this... I've had this option to send family members and, like, children and things. But, restless leader... I think if we go out exploring, we lose the throne and hand it to our heir. I think that's how that works. Um, I'm not sure... Uh, what your message is supposed to be trying to say. That's why. <clears throat> Try that one again. Mm, oh, yeah, taking... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, either or. Now, I'm going to go... I, I think I just caught it. Yeah, yeah. Two, he's still the best leader at the moment. Do it. Go exploring. <laughs> Well, the thing is, our, our heir would take over very young. He's got two wisdom, one charisma, and one discipline. And our guy has minus one wisdom, four charisma, two courage, two discipline. <clears throat> so yeah, he is better. Um, but I've never had that option before. Okay, I think we do the leveraging luxuries first. Court merchant or court minister? Let's go minister. Felina joins the court. The new court minister, Felina, has joined the court. Her aptitude in the matters of state will help keep them going forward. She is a tactician. Interesting. Tacticians are immune to critical strikes when they are the general. She's got two wisdom, two charisma, and two discipline. <coughs> nice. Very nice. I approve. Now, we go on to boastful air. If we do one or the other, I don't think it'll affect our situation that much long term. So if we upset him for X number of turns, this is still early days enough and he's far, far away from us. So he's way over here. We're not likely to have any real long term consequences from that. We did get a bonus relations for the trade. So he likes us a little bit now. Um, yes, from luxuries. Greek marriages to leaders' descendants? What? Greek marriages to leaders' descendants. Why are we... Oh! There's a Greek married to one of my descendants. Well, that's interesting. Who's got a Greek spouse? That's weird. Huh. I don't know. Oh. Oh. Wait a second. Our court... Our courtier is the... Is Alexander the hero... <laughs> okay. Um, Prince Consort Felina is, 
the princess consort Felina is in our court. That's Alexander's wife. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure what taking off Alexander would do. To this. I think we go with the temporary negative 20 turns where the king is the Greek king is upset at us but permanently Alexander is happier with us so later on he may make a good ally for us <clears throat> I did I got Alexander's wife <laughs> that's just weird question is do we go exploring I've never done this I'm really tempted to just do it now if we leave what happens is these both become uh yeah we we, we have to stay home I think I think the right thing to do here is stay home. Really tempted though. It's really tempting. All right, the options here are very obvious. We're going to go up this way. Hold on. Uh instead I can walk like here. And then up here. <clears throat> Vision wise. All right, this guy is uh, is supposed to be looking around. Uh, that's kind of important because now we know there's horses over here. So if we went this way, we'd get those horses. Uh, but honestly, over here to get these... Oh! Oh, you bugger. You little bugger. So we are going over here. Ha! <laughs> because he took those horses in that city. Well, that's that's worth knowing. Now, if I shift-click this, I believe that tells him to move that automatically next time. I think that's how that works. Well, that's frustrating. Not the not the shift-clicky thing, the other thing. All right, uh, you can come over and put the barley in here, or you can go and... Oh, you can't buy this tile. Wait, can we buy tiles with this guy? Yes, family seat can buy tiles. That's right. So go here. Buy this tile for 30 coins, boom, it unlocks both of those. Ah, that's good. I like that. Very nice. So he could go and get this this fur really easily. He could go over and get this ore really easily. He can go get the elephants really easy. Oh, that's good. Just because this one this is the city the state uh, or the center of the landowners, and they're landowners, so you know they can own land. It's a thing. Alright, let's uh cut that tree, clear it, and place in the quarry what are we short on orders yeah well we got two parts of the thing jo job done anyways <clears throat> all right oh what do you have to remember drake your family hates you they might hate him too That's, you're not wrong youtube didn't like the fact that you told me my family hated me <laughs> doesn't understand the gamer world okay Friendly visits. <clears throat> a family friend paid a visit to to Prince Mur Mursili School to send a and sends a glowing report about your heir's progress. Clearly not a one of it's a family friend, not a family member. He appears happy and healthy, and he is expected to return home to take his place in court. Uh, is he? He's fifteen now. Or excited to return home to take his place in court. Okay. Send him a gift of academic texts. He gains 60 experience. Or send him wine for reveling with his friends. He's in college, okay? All right, he's in college. I think the right thing to do is do the reveling. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Do we gain him, give him XP? Get him a tech boost start? Or initially give him a free charisma? I think we'll go with the charisma point. Well, what we really want him to do is is master the wisdom side of things. Yeah, you know, we'll give the charisma because he's a college kid. He's got to get out and party some, right? Uh, independent merchant. A talented independent merchant has been making this rounds, stopping at various points in the realm. There's not very many points in the realm, so it was a short trip. Um, in your realm and those near you, it occurred 
to you that uh, as he's currently not affiliated with any particular tribe or nation, he could you could entice him to come work for you. By all means, the more merchants you employ, the better. Lose 290 bucks and get a court merchant. Or, no, we must maintain discipline. Uh, we can't just be hiring any and everyone. Uh, or, yes, we can. Now, that's interesting. We would gain the discipline. Putting us to three discipline. Right now, we make 40 bucks from our two points of discipline. We make another 32 from this. <clears throat> but I think we get a court merchant. Because courtiers are awesome. There we go. That is, I, I that that's the the beard thing with the little little tassel tied there. I gotta do that with my beard, guys. Although my hair is more like his length than his length. I haven't had it that long before. <laughs> All right, so he is um, minus one wisdom, plus four courage. Plus two discipline. Well, he's a zealot. So zealots are great as generals because they cannot die until they have only one hit point. Which can actually turn quite effective. <clears throat> oh. He's a Tucson and he can be, yeah, he's a Tucson governor. Okay. Now, question is, which one of the cities are we going to give? Is this going to be patrons? Or is this going to be the Riders? Riders would give us a scout and plus two training per semester. City would always be connected, but the city is connected. Um, we hit the rivers and roads. It is connected to the capital if we build there. It would tell us if it was not. It would say not will not be connected. It would say right up here if it wasn't. If we go with these guys, we get... Um, Culture per semester per specialist, civics per semester, and we can hurry projects with money. That's actually really good. Minus one discontentment per culture level, or per cultural event, I apologize. Minus one discontentment level per culture event. And we get a court minister. I think we have to go this way. The luxuries they want is... Gems and incense. Is it just me or do we already have gems? No, we don't. We have pearls. All right. All right. Zalupwan. We are now the settler. Uh, so if the cognomens here are interesting, you gain these cognomens and you, you, have to, you can look them up in your whatever opedia old world opedia i don't know what it's called um a cognomen is an is an acquired title that increases the legitimacy of the leader such as the invincible the wise the great new cognomens are acquired when the specific stat associated with the cognomen across the necessary crosses a necessary threshold for instance becoming the wise by discovering a great number of technologies and so on <clears throat> And it, uh, the threshold increases with each subsequent leader of the nation. So to get the settler, the next, his, his next heir would need more points than he needed. So the, this list down here is very, very simple for this one. So it's very straightforward. Current progress needs 3,000 of 3,000. He just got the settler. So obviously it's acquired. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I think you can only get a new cognomen when you get something that's better points than legitimacy plus 20. Anyways, uh, he got the, the settler cognomen from settling three cities because it's three uh, found, cities founded three times a thousand points. Different cognomens are substantially different with different uh, effects and different, um, sorry, with different legitimacy value and a whole lot of different things you have to do to get them. Um, <clears throat> Stake says, uh, had the same problem with a sister and daughter when I died. My daughter had to let her aunt be the regent or she would have schemed against her niece. Nasty. Um, Harapsky joins the court. 
So, new court uh, person. The this lady is uh, of the new family because new court minister. Um, orator. <clears throat> Orators can be what? Orators can be governors and ambassadors. Okay. Uh, she has uh, as a governor, she can hurry projects with orders. She has frugal, which is a strength, which is minus fifty percent improvement cost. <laughs> she gonna she gonna be good at that place. A uh, eight charisma. Oh. oh, we're making seventy one civics. Can we sell civics, please? <laughs> for any for science, can we be very very civil, just not very smart. <laughs> That's fantastic. We got court merchants up the wazoo. We got five court merchants right now. Um, I would love to have her in as a governor here, if we could. Uh, we can't until we build a, until we have our worker build a, um, garrison here. That's something. <clears throat> we can't build roads yet, either. You guys can start on the quarry. Uh, you've already built one farm. Now, do we build the other farm, or do we go with the furs? I think we go for the furs. We're going to pull up here. And we're going to buy this tile, which will give us the fur as well. And it actually connects the border of this fur is in this city now. Because that's the tile that we gained to get access to this. That's good. Next turn, we can go and start working on the fur. <clears throat> you guys, once you're done uh, working on your warrior, you're going to build a farmer. Uh, and then probably the festival. Maybe. You'll probably give, get the fur, actually, not the festival. I'm gonna... Oh, no. Two semesters to build... Oh, my goodness. Why is it only two semesters to build that farmer? I approve, but yay. Okay, uh, we're gonna need... We're gonna need the workers to build some stuff there. You need to build a garrison over here, uh, too. Um, that might not have been the right, the right choice. Maybe before we get that fur built up, we need the garrison. Mm, not certain, sir. Not certain. Uh, okay, where is this guy gonna go? Well, probably down to beat up on these gulls. <clears throat> Eventually. Don't know that that's gonna be his first move, though. At least in that direction. We will have another warrior coming out here. We might be able to take out this gull village with two warriors. That probably is pushing it. But we might. Uh, and we'll actually put a warrior in here as well. Because <clears throat> I'm really terrified, to be honest. <laughs> really terrified. Uh, the settler. Under the rule... Under your rule, Hati has... Uh, pushed ever outwards into new lands. Cities rising at a speed never before seen. <laughs> this rapid expansion has your name traveling across the world. This is his idea, but it's clearly not the truth. Uh, with people calling you the settler. Yeah. Mm hmm. You travel to the newest city, watching as the scaffolding is raised for a new administrative center. <clears throat> as with each. Uh, inscriptions are written to praise your rule. Uh, watching the artisan's work leads you to reflect on your legacy. What success, what successes will be written about you in the future? Oh yes, we can start a new ambition. Maintain four governors, control five ranged units, or gain some legitimacy and follow your own path. I think we maintain four governors, because I like that idea. Because governors are good. Um, and we can do so once we get, you know, garrisons built. Uh, well, you've got, we got only one order left. I'll move them up here. There we go. Get a few coins for discovering that gold mine. Now, I haven't even used the command to, uh, uh, to clear stuff, or to re harvest stuff yet. Well, those horses are 50 gold. 50 gold. I could sit a settler like this guy. You'd go up there and just sit there, and every time it's available, you can just rip it apart. Uh, what's going on here? Oh. 
News arrives at Rome in from Rome that the king has learned. Um, uh, oh, King Romulus the Learned has abdicated. The ruler of King Romulus the New of Rome, age thirty-two, uh, has taken the throne. Their opinion he is angry. That's rude. Very rude. Um. The health of our wife has begun to decline. She is ill. Uh oh. They didn't get along great, but that's not. What's going on? The controls are. The, the image is going on here. Visiting Remus. Remus? That is Remus. Not Remus. Is that Remus? I don't think that's how you spell Remus. Anyways. <clears throat> Romulus is gone. Remus is in. Um. With the abdication of Romulus, the ruler of Rome has passed to King Remus the New. Uh, once the murmurs of shock from the court die down, the messenger reveals the main purpose of her visit. Remus has, visited, uh, has invited you to visit Rome on a diplomatic trip to visit the new ruler's lands. How will you use this opportunity? Try to befriend the King of Rome. We gain 40 opinion for 20, for 20 turns, but lose 2 legitimacy. Um, use this trip for, as a chance to spy and learn more about the lands. Gain... Ooh. Now, he would become suspicious of us. I don't like that. Minus 60 opinion. He's already less than happy with me. I feel like we're going to get crushed. <laughs> I just I feel like we might get crushed. He's got two negative 200 Yikes. Refuse to attend. For 20 turns, he gets a little upset. We gain the legitimacy. Or he's going to be even more upset. He's going to be suspicious because I want 70 science. Because that's huge. That's like three and a half years worth of science. Seven turns worth of science. Um, your courtier, uh, oligarch Harpsky. That is. Wink. Right. Here, the new one, the frugal one of the uh, uh, new town, uh, approaches the court about a title change. She feels overlooked in the court and believes her energy and expertise could be used more productively. <laughs> she wants a new title. Well, she could be overseer of the fields. Plus 40 opinion, and granted the title of Overseer, plus 120 food. Uh, we could grant her the title of Possessor of Veneration, and gain uh, 70 civics, plus the 40 points again. Or we could uh, Steward of the Chamber, he could become. Install a Steward of the Chamber, gain 2 legitimacy. That sounds like a good choice. Let's do it. She is the Steward now. Nikolai, how's it going? As a stream? Nice. And good morning. Yeah, the uh, game just... Uh, Nikolai, the game has just officially, as of today... Um, well, earlier today, about... 12 hours ago or something like that. Uh, 12 to 14 hours ago, somewhere in there. Uh, just released on Steam and GOG. So, uh, I planned to do a... New stream and trying out the Hittites. We're doing terrible because we have very, very low, slow growth and horrible science. But we're here for, for probably not much longer. Probably going to wrap it up pretty soon. So I get a full day again tomorrow. So, uh, All right, this guy's finished his moves. I think the fur rather than the garrison. If we build a garrison, I'm going to move him over here just so we can see this. If we were build, to build a garrison, because we can't see it without it. Oh, requires one active law. We can't even build a garrison right now. Well, we could activate a law if we had any available. Oh, we do. Oh, goodness. Enact exploration. I forgot to enact it. Totally forgot about that. Okay, let's enact that. What that does is now no extra unit consumption when outside borders. So, so the warrior's not going to consume 1.5 iron being out of the borders. He'll only produce the base one. And we finished the exploration ambition, which is great. Um, look okay for that one. Uh, we also can, scouts can move on water, which is wonderful. 
Mm, that's just about it. There's nothing spectacular. The opposite is, uh, the other alternative for that, it's one or the other, is uh, uh, epics. Now, we could switch to epics right away because part of the reason we could do that relatively cheaply, it's only 150 civics, is because our character is a judge. So he can flop those around. He can flop laws easily because he's a judge. That's saying something. Um, all units would gain plus 10 uh, culture per military unit killed to the nearest city. So if we killed a unit nearby the capital, killed an enemy unit near the capital, we gain plus 10 culture to the city, which could actually be quite potent. For instance, if we're down here fighting this place and we killed three units, this place's culture would go from uh, 32 semesters away to being you know, like 20 semesters or less. They're only gaining three per turn. So 10 is pretty substantial. If they kill the unit every three turns, which they conceivably could in a, in a war situation, they would be doubling the cultural growth of the city. So it's, not, it's no small deal. Uh, it might be a better choice for us because the only advantage this gives us is that our scouts can now scout out on the water. Which is actually something I kind of love the idea of. Because it lets me run this guy freely and safely around behind. Um, now, we cannot get... We just enacted a law, so we could actually go here and look at the garrison. So the garrison is an interesting building. It adds orders per, tur per turn, which is great. Costs a bit of stone. Not so great. Um, it's a 20% defense if friendly territory. So... If we are standing on one of our garrisons, we get a defensive bonus while doing that. Cool. But it also enables the city governor. And we can later, once we have four laws, we can get the stronghold, which is a separate building altogether. I love this idea, and I think we need to get this done right away. Because we have an ambition to get governors. And the governors, generally speaking, really, really do boost the city's effectiveness. So in five turns, we get a, warrior, a worker here. And he'll go and get a um, a garrison done there. And then, of course, we'll get, a, get the horses done up there as well. So I'm wondering if maybe another worker in each city wouldn't be worth doing. Might be very valuable, actually. Because if we can have, for instance, we're spending these orders just moving our dudes around because we're waiting for things to happen. I think maybe the idea of having another worker right here building a quarry... And then ending up with two quarries in the same amount of time would be huge going forward. Similarly, we could build like civil stuff really quickly and expanding territory. Yeah, I kind of like the idea. Our military dude, however, is going to uh, meander on down this way. You are ready in two turns. This guy's ready almost right now. Well, he is ready right now, but he's just chilling out. Oh, there's the Gauls with an upgrade. So that is an outpost. 30% defensive strength. Notice how it's got much bigger pointy walls than uh, than these guys. Which doesn't upgrade, I don't think. Barbarians occupy city-states like other tribes, but they are in permanent state of war with all nations. They get marauders, skirmishers, Elite Marauders and Elite Skirmishers in time. Uh, I don't think their villages upgrade. However, the Gauls will continue to upgrade for sure. We don't know any more about that, but yeah. I think we go take out this Barbarian camp first, though. Although I'm concerned that the Gauls are going... This Gaul village is already going to be lost to the Romans. And if that happens... Oof. That's costly. Um, well, that's unfortunate. He's on that city site. One order's left. There's a settler going over to take said city site. All right, choose research. All right, now, this is three semesters to get this bonus. Like, that's pretty huge, but, um, we haven't talked at all about religions. We're going to go go with shrines. I'm going to leave that stone bonus, in spite of the fact that stone is super valuable 
and we only make five a turn. That's three turns. That's half of the way to divination. We just can't afford the extra research for anything useless. Or not useless. Anything that is, uh, well, a distraction from our very, very limited science capacity. Oh, hey, I forgot about that. Uh, ow. Yank. Alright, inspired by the Divine Hand, a oh, work of art. Inspired by the Divine Hand, our, our prince embarks on the ambitious piece of public art, a wall painted to line the entrance of the Tusa Central Promenade. He'll continue his training as he works, but the efforts may take an exhausting toll. No doubt. Uh, he must remain focused on his formal education. He gets estranged. Or a piece of public art will prove a worthy lesson. He becomes an artist. Uh, minus two discipline. Ooh. Honestly, I don't mind the minus two discipline. He loses the plus one. Goes down to minus one. Lose a bit of coin per turn. Eh. No, I think we do the artist. Because we want him in good relations with us. He's like the only family member that likes us at all. <clears throat> never enough. Sometimes too much is never enough. The insatiable uh, Adana. She is the head of the family of the Ninasan. Uh, and her family, unsatisfied with their lives of plenty, have petitioned uh, the court for even more imports to slake their lust for fine goods. <clears throat> the constant consumption and wanton spending is taking a toll on your treasuries. One option to remedy the greed would be to increase production of these items inside Hati, or we could continue to ship them in from afar for the family, uh, for the vassals, our vassal's family. Uh, she is greedy, that's why we have this option. Uh, we shall start production in Hati. Uh, gains luxurious delights. Um... We should start production in Hati. So that's everywhere. No, Hatusa gains luxury delights. Which produces a minus one discontent per semester. And 20% increase to the culture. That sounds wonderful. It's better to continue importing such, such uh, comforts. They become endeared to the king. Lose 110 bucks. Uh, or be, they become estranged. No, I love the idea of building or building capacity for the luxurious delights. It's not an actual luxury. It's kind of a extrapolated nonsense, but eh, it's enough. It's enough to be worth being. Ah, oh, there you go. So we, we have access to see something of this. I want to make sure that we get in here to take this guy out. A warrior in five turns there and a warrior in one turn there. Worker in four turns up here. All right, so you were supposed to come up probably to... Oh. Well, you're going to stop here and get the die for sure. And culture. Boom. That's huge. Uh, and can we hop up here? Yes, and we can harvest this for 50 bucks. I love it. And you are going to go over here. You might as well harvest the gold as well. Oh, there you go. There, and we cannot harvest the fur. And that's it for that semester. All right, well, we better put an end to... Hey, Daniel Bra uh, uh, Daniel Bymore. Byram. Sorry, can't read. Too late, too tired. <laughs> <coughs> released from Yoba 24 hours ago, so stay. <coughs> Queen Consort. He has to, yeah, released on Wednesday the 18th at some point. 
at some in some places. <clears throat> Officially, it was embargoed until. Uh, yeah, it was embargoed until 3 p.m. yesterday, my time, or something like that. Eastern time, I don't remember. Middle of the day sometime, or evening sometime. Queen Consort, uh, your wife has recovered from her mal malaise and is no longer ill. Well, that's that's nice. That's lovely. Um, we have the garrison here. We could uh, build another quarry. I think that's the go-to for that. Building up our quarrying capacity is going to be helpful. I approve. Um, and uh, this fine fellow is finished now, so he can come on down to his friends here and here, and then smack that guy in the face. And you can come down here and smack that guy in the face. Boom! Two quick hits, and he's almost dead. Now, if they're, they're mostly dead... Um, you know, you can perform miracles. If they're all dead, you only go through their pockets looking for loose change. However, a unit that is not dead can fight back pretty aggressively. So this guy's still going to smack us as if he was, uh, if I grab this guy, select him, and I move, I can see what kind of damage he can do in different from different positions. I imagine this guy's going to move up and fight. This guy's also going to poke. So we're going to lose, take some hits there, but that's fine. We got, um... Three semesters left on building the garrison here. Still three to get our worker in the north at all. <clears throat> um, this guy over here was um, harvesting stuff. Um, now, the harvesting requires... Ooh, we go down there and we harvest that pearls next turn um the harvesting requires an order uh but it also has some time before this is back yeah needs to regenerate needs to regenerate so it's got the bucket symbol saying that it's already been gathered that fur would have been nice to use too but we are out of orders it's 7 a.m for you stay huh Yeah, I figured they'd move up and poke at us. This guy might not, because he's probably not going to leave his defensive position. His mother's disposition. He's gained another discipline. That's recovered his, dis his negative discipline. There you go. Mama keeps teaching him good. All right, now, this guy can come in here. Smash down there. You could stay where you are and finish this unit off. Or you can come over here. I think we'll just stay there and finish this unit off. Good. So far, so good on the attack here. They Did they just spawn this one? Um, we'll produce new unit in eight semesters. we got to keep that in mind. Uh, we got to be proactive. When you commit, keep committing you know, to it, because it's going to make a difference long term. Uh, this pearls is avail available to harvest. We'll do that. And we can come on down here and harvest again. And I believe, yep, yeah, uh, that was pretty intense sounding, or looking. Um, why are we able to move like infinitely here? Hold on. There we go. It just wasn't showing the uh, the range icons. Pretty fast moving boat though. <clears throat> now. Um, letting those recharge is good, but, uh, harvesting culture, man. I've forgotten about that, how valuable that is. Alright, popular board game, the first cultural event for Hattusa. A new game has become popular in Hattusa. The game is, a, is as simple as it is popular, using a rough red clay board marked with holes that form a route to be raced by the players. Sound familiar? Um... No name seems to have been decided yet for the curious pastime. What should we do with the undeniable, an un, undeniably fun invention? Encourage it as a pastime of Hattusa. Minus 30 discontentment and plus 60 culture. Or 
Is game fit for the aristocracy and we improve relations for 20 turns? Well, you know I'm going to go with the uh, people's growth for sure over that. Um, if we look in Hattusa, it has just reached a development level. It needs 500 points to get to the next one. So it's, it's going to be a while. But uh, it's also level 1 discontent with 108 of 110. It's about to hit level 2 discontentment. So if we leave there... <clears throat> and we go to this board game event. This will give us minus 30 and plus 60 culture. That's uh, not not a tiny not a tiny improvement. All right, there we go. We got uh, we got 75 of a hundred of 500 now. Or 74 of 500. 71 semesters to go. Um, but we dropped back. Probably we saved ourselves. Well, we saved three semesters before the uh, discontentment bubbles over again. So worth doing, I think. Uh, that doll's gonna smack me in the face next time. Oh no, he's not, because I'm gonna run away. The King's Road! Our expedition comes upon an impressive paved road system leading between wood structures that have long since rotted away. The engineers requ engineering required for such a site was far ahead of its time. Um, what would you have, uh, what would you have us do with it? Break down the roads for stone. Um, we get plus one discipline and seven, 270 stone or study the technology, acquire f labor force technology. Wow. I mean, a hundred percent. We got to go with the, oh, I like gaining stats for a character, but we got to go with the tech. And there we go. And that will do a couple things. Does this group count as connected? I think this city counts as connected. Yes, it does. Uh, it's got to, right? It's got the connected symbol? No. Is it connected? It is not connected. Okay, it was the other way around. These guys auto-connect, right? No. The riders that we did not choose to take auto-connected. So this guy right here could be so told to spend a very short number of turns to rapidly run a road across here. And that's pretty darn valuable, I would say. In fact, he could do a you know, a triangular road system there for sure. Uh, and we are done with our semesters. We're going to have to save it up and leave it here. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to leave the game here. Uh, interesting. I haven't seen uh, enough to know if I like the Hittites yet because we haven't gotten into much war. <laughs> but uh, this has been a very slow start, both because of tutorialing the crap out of it and explaining things. Uh, happy to answer all those questions, of course, and uh, and help people understand the game because that's really what fascinates me about games like this is spreading the love of them. Um, and, uh, you know, also because of a pretty rough, ineffective start as far as our researching goes and stuff like that. So, if we can boost research, that would be great. Um, I guess we have to get some sort of research that permits us to improve research. I don't know. But I think we're going to leave it there. We're going to save this, um, uh, as, I don't know, a T turn 24. Sure, that sounds good. Uh, we're going to end it right there and uh, head back to our main menu here. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for joining me. I hope you do, do, did enjoy the uh, live stream tonight. Thank you so much for those uh, who donated to the channel, you guys, and, and just being here for stuff. But they, those who spend the extra coins to donate really really does, uh, does mean a lot to the family. Thank you very, very, very much. Later, Drizzy. Thanks for the stream. <laughs> Dizzy Drake? Is that what a Drizzy is? Makes sense to me. And it's real. Uh, but anyways. We'll let her sing us out in the background. So much fun today, Drake. Thanks for all the info. Hope you have a good night. I am going to go sleep for six hours and then go back and paint for another 12. And then come back and stream. More night stream should be fun. <laughs> We'll be streaming this again tomorrow night, and uh, unless uh, unless people really want to see a fresh start, we'll be continuing this um, this playthrough right here. 
for at least another uh, another stream. So we'll do some at least one more stream of uh, this old world look at the Hittite people. We'll see where that takes us, and then uh, figure out where we go to next. <laughs> it's a nickname of Rapper Drake. Okay. Cool. <laughs> it's outside of my uh, that's outside of my purview. Although I am aware of that 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 uh, Drake is a thing elsewhere, like a rapper and other things. Well, thanks, everybody. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your night, and uh, happy Friday. It was Thursday, but now it's Friday. Anyways, I'm tired. Good night, guys. We'll see you in game.